Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Our learning is on. It is I, Van Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Rachel, this was the greatest movie weekend oh, of I all knew time. you were going to start with Van that. Van Luscious Black Lathan was at the movies. All weekend. Um, Three movies. Wait, what's the third? The third movie is not a movie that was in theaters. Oh. But it is a film that was brilliant, poignant. I don't even want to call it the third movie. To me, it's the first movie. Brilliant, poignant, well-acted, well-directed, well-paced, unbelievably funny, timely, with a fantastic soundtrack. The oh. movie's called They Clone Tyrone. And let me tell you something right now. Jewel Taylor and everybody over at Macro, uh, I'm signed to M88, but I never talk to y'all. Y'all don't invite me to shit. That's fine. I'll I tell you guys right now. Like, I, like <laughs> I, I, I tell you guys right now, Barbie, fantastic. Most fun I've had in a the theater since Avengers Endgame. Interesting. I swear. Most fun I've had in the theater since Avengers Endgame. Oppenheimer, phenomenal movie. Three hours, an investment, but maintains this kinetic energy. This this tone, okay. this pace, this dramatic importance that's rare to a lot of films I've ever seen. Fantastic. Barbie. A com uh, uh, like the commentary is there. It's hilarious. I'm just kin. I'm kin enough. All of these things <laughs> are great. You have to see these movies. They clone Tyrone. Yeah. Might have just been the best film that I saw this weekend. Hmm. I watched it last night and... The movie starts off with, it has something to say, but it starts off and it, it grounds you into this specific place called the Glen. That's, I'm assuming, near Memphis and Tennessee somewhere. Uh, and almost from the jump, it takes you on this journey. And this journey gets so deep, but it's never preaching to you. It's just giving you this unbelievable science fiction allegory that's so relatable. Um, and so essential mm. to kind of our experience here. I just, I, the movie, it's the kind of movie, I, after I watch it, I want to know everything else about it. I loved all three films. I, the movies are back. The movies are back. They clone Tyrone, Barbie, Oppenheimer. The movies are back. I want to see They Clone Tyrone in the theater. You have to see it, Rachel. Of all these three movies, which ones did you see? Isn't They Clone Tyrone on Netflix? You're over three. And everybody knows it. <laughs> I am. Uh, I am. Did I even try? No. Didn't even try. No, I'm like, what was I doing this weekend? Wasn't even, a, honestly, those movies were all sold out. Not that Clone Tyrone. And that is, I actually, if I'm going to see any of them, it will be that one. Yeah, it will be that one. For sure. I'm going to watch it on a plane. Okay, watch on a plane. It's it would, great. It should be a great plane movie. Yeah, no, no. For sure, that is the movie that I'm watching. The reason I'm hesitant on Barbie, I think also because I'm just over, like there's just so much Barbie stuff mm -hmm. that I've kind of been like, okay, everybody's talking about it. And I don't know what it's about. That's why I said it's so interesting that you laughed because I don't know what to expect. I don't know if it's a comedy, a drama. I don't I don't know. It's a, Is it a feminist movie? Is it's it? the most feminist movie I've ever seen. Okay, yeah, I don't, I have, I don't know what to expect. I am excited to see President Barbie, and I don't really know anything else after that. Tell you what, the, it would be difficult to peg the movie. The movie is both an important movie. It's both like a wacky slapstick comedy. Okay, um, it has a lot to say, and it says it, not winking, staring directly at you, but oh. staring at you. Okay, so hard that you laugh. Okay. I loved the movie. I loved, I left Oppenheimer. I was so fucking charged up for Oppie, man. Oppie is like, you know, maybe one of the worst people that's ever lived. I know, and he you're was, giving us a sweet name. fucking everything that moved. He uh, invented nuclear war. Um, but it's just something about the importance of the film. The film feels important. It takes itself very seriously. It's insanely well acted. They essentially cast every important white actor over 35 to be in this movie. If you're if you're a white actor and you didn't get cast in Oppenheimer, you got to fire your agent. Got to fire him. It's a lot of her, people. Him or her. That takes out a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Everybody's in the movie. Ron Malik's in the movie. 
Matt Damon's in the movie. Cillian Murphy's in the movie. Josh Hartnett's in the um, Achille Murphy's in the movie. Josh Hartnett's in the movie. People just popping. Jason Clark's in the movie. Tim Josh Daly's Hartnett. in the movie. Like it's people just popping up in the movie. The kid from Dr Drake and Josh is in the movie. He pops up. Casey Affleck pops up in the film. Uh, the guy who played Han Solo in the Han Solo rebuild, Ruby, Robert Downey Jr. is in the movie. Everybody just pops up in this film. It's like one of the most deep and robust casts ever. But one of the best performances came from Emily Blunt. Uh, She's great. Who was in the movie. And then fearless performance from Florence, Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. I am captivated by anything like I've her. seen her in. Have you seen the film A Good Person? No. Very good. Zach Braff mm -hmm. came from him directed it. He wrote it for Florence, but was going through something in his life, and this is where this movie came from. Fantastic movie. Mm. Great cast. Great story. Very meaningful for people who are going through something in their life in a different way to look at things when you're coming out of despair. I don't like this feeling. Okay. It's a very good movie, guys. You've seen Maybe the movie that I else. haven't seen. Oh, I thought you meant what I was saying. I told Kalika about it too. Because we're talking about our, our love for Florence Pugh. You know what? And I, I know you I, like Zach Brown. I changed my don't mind. You? I saw it. My bad. No, you didn't. I did. I watched it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, it. who else is in it? Uh, Morgan Freeman. You didn't sound confident when you said that. Is Morgan's in it. Morgan. Who else? Um, Wait, is Morgan Freeman really in a movie? Yes, he is, actually. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> Wait a minute. I just, that shows you how Morgan's working. I just pulled that out of my ass. Yes, Morgan Freeman is very much so in the movie. Oh, are you serious? I would say Florence Pugh and Morgan Freeman, it's that relationship. It's I, huge. I, I really was just joking around. I didn't, I've, I've never seen the movie. I know you haven't. I've never seen the movie. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, it, it was a great movie weekend. Got me all jammed up. I got excited, man. I get excited about movies. We are so back. Does it get your creative juices flowing when you see? Are you inspired when you leave a movie theater? At and first, you, and then, okay. I'm like, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna write the great American film. Mm -hmm. And then I get home. There's a YouTube video that says, uh, "Can Hulk beat Iron Man?" <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I'll start right after this. And then, but then I watch five YouTube videos, and by the time the end of the videos, it's hi. What we're going to do here is analyze the physics of Superman's powers. <laughs> and then, like, and then before, you know, before you know, it's time to go to sleep. Kalika said, because we were at dinner this weekend. Oh, so that's one thing I did Friday, mm -hmm. girls' dinner. Kalika said that when she got, gets home, she's like, I know that when I look at YouTube, it's going to be about 15 videos about Oppenheimer. Yeah. W did you go down a dark hole? Yeah, I went, down, but I, I went down that hole before, though, as well. Oh, in preparation. In preparation for Oppenheimer. Because I wanted to read this book and I didn't have time. And so I went down the rabbit hole before then. Um, look, something happened that I want to talk about real quick. Two things I want to do. Okay. One is I actually want to apologize to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Did he reach out to you? He did not. Is this somebody from his team? No one reached out to anyone. Okay, why the change of heart? Okay, because I think that I, and perhaps you... Got caught up, you got caught up in what I was saying? We're a little unfair to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. okay. Um, I, I think that his use of the term ghettofied wasn't racially charged. I think he's a big brained academic and he, um, he, he used that word, which is a regrettable choice of words, but he used that word to mean, uh, the, traditional definition of ghettofied, um, separated, taken away, sectioned off, and not really ghettofied, meaning that, I thought that anything that meant, with black word. people was, is ghetto. And I think that I did watch it. I watched the full interview, but when I watched the entire thing in context, I think that Neil maybe is a little bit, maybe removed. He's an academic. Maybe he's a little bit removed. He's out of touch with how that would come across. But I don't think he was meaning to say, y'all turning me into a ghetto-ass nigga <laughs> by making me a black scientist. I still do not agree with not wanting to be called a black scientist. Yes. I don't have a problem with it. I think what he was trying to say was that they use black scientists as a pejorative for him. Mm -hmm. And he feels belittled by their intent on using the word. Yeah, he's passionate about that. I personally don't feel belittled by being called a black anything, but I'm also not trying to 
um, like legislate what people's intent is when they use it. I'm sure that I've been called a black something before when someone meant it wrong or, yeah. or leading black voice or whatever, leading voice fan. Um, but I don't think that he necessarily meant it in that way. Uh, before we move on, do you have any space for that idea? It's a higher learning retraction. Ghetto, ghetto ties is what he meant to say. Did he say ghetto ties? He said ghetto fied. He said ghetto fied. Your definition? I don't know if I'm, I, I think I'm pronouncing this right. Ghetto ties. Okay, what's ghetto ties? To isolate. I, th- I think that's where he was going. I think that's where he was going. To confine or to, to constrict put, to into a particular... To put in restrict or isolate, yeah, segregated place. Yeah, it's not ghetto fied. But I think that he probably was using it in that way. Ghetto ties. So, to answer your question, no. (laughs) (laughs) So you're still of the idea that Neil deGrasse Tyson doesn't (laughs) like being I'm sure, you know what, this is the disclaimer that I will make. Maybe it's not a disclaimer, but I will say this. Did I watch the whole video? No. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have changed my mind. Did I watch other videos that some people wrote me that were like, he's spoken out about you know, uh, maybe not black pride, but s- certain other things that would insinuate that he is no shame in, in being black or being a scientist that is black. He just doesn't want to be categorized as a black scientist. I don't know if that's the case. And I didn't do a whole, you know, deep dive into him to figure out if that's true or not. Mm-hmm. But for, I'm only speaking to the clip. You can call that irresponsible or not. Ghetto fied is what he said. It's not the same too. No, it's not even the same word. It's not even the same. It's not the same word. You're right. You're We're talking about word. a bl- a scientist here. Yeah, it's not the same word. I can't argue that it's the same word. I'll say this. Rach is obviously entitled to her opinion. You radicalized me during that segment. And <laughs> I charged you, you up. Are, you, you charged me <laughs> up. <laughs> um, and when I thought about it more, I just thought I should address it. I don't think that he meant totally it that way. Fair. I don't I do think that it would still be a very productive conversation with him to discuss whether or not um, that right there should be accepted or, um, I guess, uh, taken in a pejorative way. I'm not in the rooms that he's in, so I don't know uh, how people are conveying what they think about him, his science, and who he is to him. That might be something that he's dealt with for a long time. And I also certainly didn't mean to insinuate that the more education that you got, the whiter you got. What I said was, oh, and this is what I said was, sometimes people use different things that they can um, uh, accumulate or add to themselves in society to mm. uh, increase their proximity to whiteness. You can yes, yes, get you super do. educated to where you feel like that gives you a greater proximity to whiteness. You can get rich enough to where they give you, you gives you a greater proximity to whiteness. You can. Uh, marry into a family where you feel like that gives you a greater proximity to whiteness. So I wasn't... And people do do that. Yeah, I wasn't saying that if you become a scientist, now you're whiter. Mm -hmm. I'm saying sometimes people use their education as a way to get whiter, as a means to get closer... They do. ...to to white people. And I don't talk like y'all. I don't think like y'all. Whatever, I'm with them. They other themselves. Other themselves, exactly. Okay, um, something else I want to talk about real quick. There was an interaction. uh, You know, I had to go on the Reddit. You're back on the Reddit? I went on the Reddit. It was I went too hard on the Reddit last time, and it was disgusting. You always go hard on the Reddit. But I, but I said that I wouldn't be cool with Reddit people if I saw them in person. You di- No, you did say that. That's not, that's not great. No. That's not, I don't mean that. Especially I'm, after you encouraged people to join the Reddit and to be a part of this community. I didn't encourage them to talk about my father. And that is unacceptable. Didn't encourage them to kick my ass and all of that stuff. But you know what's funny? I, did, I encourage them to be a part of the Reddit and uh, their interaction is very important. The fact that they are charged up about the podcast and they think about the podcast enough to post about the podcast yeah. and post about other relevant issues. That's actually something I appreciate very much. So uh, I, I went too far. Sometimes Van gets in his feelings and that's why he's in therapy. So um, I'm in a very uncomfortable way because I'm having to eat crow twice at the beginning of a podcast and it's not something that I like to do, but here I am turning away from the camera to hide my shame. I'm sorry. We also don't like this voice. Okay, so that's get, my get that's my that's my vulnerable bo- voice. <laughs> get back to it. Um, but there's a, a, a an interaction on the Reddit that I want to discuss. Okay. Um, 
based upon, I guess, some of the the opinions that I've put forth uh, surrounding the summit of the sexes um, and just other things that we've talked about, there was someone who said Van is for segregation. He wants segregation. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess that's because people think that I have a problem with interracial relationships, which I really seriously don't. I don't have a problem with interracial relationships. I think that they're funny sometimes. You know, I think it's funny when we're all, you can't tell me, okay, let me give you, let me give you an example of something. Let me give you an example of something. (laughs) Give you an example. That picture, right? What picture? The picture of Magic Johnson, his wife, Samuel L. Jackson, his wife. I haven't seen this. Judge Mathis, his, they're all in on vacation oh. in Italy, and everybody's okay. there, and then Michael Jordan came. And when you look at that picture, that's funny, dog. <laughs> I, I'm so, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's, hey, hey, everybody, they, they, they do, you love whatever. What I don't, I think more so, just to clarify for people, another clarification, I think more so what I have a problem is, is a an acceptable double standard, but when the double standard goes too far. So it's an acceptable double standard. I think that black women, I'll just say this, I think that black women are to a point now to where they probably do need to expand their horizons. I'm not saying that they don't. It's an acceptable double standard, but sometimes the double standard is used to excuse what I feel like is black fella hate, all right? And sometimes when I see that, I want to call it out, or not even call it out, I want to remind sisters that we should be having conversations that are more um, nutritious to both of us. Go ahead and get it off, Rachel. No, I, no, no, because this is just a top of the show thing. Y'all, you know where I stand. We right. don't agree on that. I don't need to, we don't need to get into that. Okay, so someone said Van is really for integration. And, and my response Segregation. To that, excuse me, segregation. My response to that was that integration was terrible for the black community. Hmm. Like, really bad. Okay. I don't mean that integration is bad. Okay. Integration is not good or bad. What I'm looking at when I said that uh, were the effects that integration and a loss to me of a central cultural ethos amongst Black people, what that meant. Okay? Okay. And I'm also looking at the very real phenomenon of Black people spending more time in structures and institutions that don't want them there. Okay. Okay. Um, now, part of this is anecdotal because I uh, grew up around a lot of older black people in Baton Rouge, right? One of them was my papa, and he had a had a um, a grocery store called Ellis Corner Groceries. Mm. It's self made. He's a man worked mm-hmm. at the post office and then did the grocery store thing. Is this mm-hmm. the one that took you to the cafeteria and told you to put some greens on the plate? You're bringing up stuff that's hurtful. Is that hurtful? I'm sorry. I thought he it was said, a funny story when you told it. Story. it was, I'm it was, sorry. If it's that, hurtful, I don't mean to be like never, that. I'm sitting there. I got like <laughs> macaroni and cheese. I got mashed potatoes. I got like fried chicken. He was like, Van, go back there and put some green on your plate now. Go ahead. Go. You know what I mean? I had to come back. He wasn't fucking with that. He said, Yo, but big this ass. is him. This, this is, is him. him. Okay. So that was a kid. <laughs> we're talking about the grocery store. Um, or we were talking about when he had it. And he says... It was a good store for as long as it was around. So go to get chocolate milk and all of that stuff. But he goes, at a certain point, uh, they didn't want to buy their groceries from me anymore because they could go buy their groceries at Winn-Dixie um, and they can go buy their groceries at the Piggly Wiggly and they can go buy their groceries, all those places. And so then the fact that I had been here and feeding people and putting people, uh, putting food in people's pantries and all of that stuff, it didn't matter anymore because once we integrated then everything that was on a different side of town became better. Um, And we lost sort of whatever it was that came to the grocery store. So for me, just to let people know, I've always had not a bad view of integrating society. That would be absurd. What I've understood is that the drive to do that in the time that it happened wasn't the end-all, be-all to Black progress and understanding. And I think it was a rebellion from a lot of the older black people that I talked about. When I say people, when I, when I said on the post that, I, that I've had conversations with people who were material to civil rights, I mean, I've sat in the room with people that you've seen in those pictures. I'm not going to bring them up to win an argument or to make a point, but people that you've seen in those pictures. Mm-hmm. And they've told me some of the regrets that they have, right? And they've told me 
some of the ways that they wish things would have been differently. Not that anyone is against uh, like integration or having a shared society, just that there was a cost. Um, and so, you know, I, I looked this up and I, there's a whole bunch of numbers and figures and things that I could throw at people, right? Because this has been extensively written on. Uh, somebody who's written, one person that, that has written a lot on it is uh, a guy I keep begging you guys to, to study his work. And that's Dr. Sandy Darity at Duke, who wrote about some of the educational costs that students that went to integrated high schools uh, uh, that they paid, right? Um, and there, there's a direct corollary in statistics and graduation percentages and how these school these kids did in the schools that they were integrated into as it, is, as it relates to the schools that they came from that were all black. Mm -hmm. And there are stats and figures around uh, the, the country that determine, that, excuse me, that, that, that bear out these numbers. Different types of stuff all over the place. There's New York Times articles on it. I read so many different things that talked about what was lost when there was a rush to assimilate into a society that we all understand is a white supremacist society, how there were essential tenets of culture that were lost, how there was a, um, a self-reliance that was lost, all of these things. Now we have a black community where we talked about this a little while ago, where the dollar stays in the community two mm -hmm. hours before it leaves the community. We can't, like the thing that, that integrated more than anything was our economics mm -hmm. that integrated more than anything else. So when I say that in integration was terrible for the black community, I'm not saying that it's terrible for America. I'm saying it's terrible for the black community. The black community, which is the idea of a self-contained and self-sufficient community that has its own schools, its own banks, its own hospitals. And what I'm pointing to is the fact that through white terrorism, uh, usury, um, uh, the, the all different types of actual structural things that we know happened, right? Um, you know, lending practices and all of that stuff. And the cultural and intellectual thought that we had to move out of our communities to, uh, or go out of our communities to achieve the American dream, there was both an actual and psychosomatic cost that was paid. And I do think that it was bad. I do think that the rush to be something other than a, 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 a collective black community has not served black people. Oh, I don't want to interrupt you. No, go for it. Do you think that black people would have been able to achieve certain things if, if there was an integration or if there was integration, but we still stayed within our communities in the same way we did when we were segregated because it was a we all we got. We mm -hmm. got to depend on each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that with it not it being separate but not equal, that black people would be able to achieve some of those things if they just stayed within their community? This is the fundamental question. Okay. I'm going to read a quote right now. All right. Promoting integration as the means to improve the lives of Black people stigmatizes Black people in Black spaces and valorizes whiteness as both the symbol of opportunity and the measuring stick for equality. In turn, such stigmatization of Black and Black spaces is precisely what foils efforts towards integration. After all, why would anyone else want to live around or interact with a group that is discouraged from being around itself? That's from Mary Patillo. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is at the crux of what I am talking about right now, because that's essentially what was said to me in a retort. Now, I'm going to read this retort, and this is a little bit of putting this person on blast, but I said that we would delve a little bit deeper into this, so I will. Um, this retort came from... Uh, uh, um, from Random Guy 622170. Okay. Who is a worthy adversary in terms of, of having these conversations? Because this was very well thought out. Um, he said to me that I would not have been Van Lathan as successful as I am right now without integration. All right. Which is not so far away from what you just said. Do you think it's the same or 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 no? What would you say? I there are similarities. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to read the entire thing. 
But who has controlled access historically? And more importantly, how do black people benefit from that access if they're segregated into the worst pockets of the country, which, be, which would be significantly worse than it is now under a pure system of segregation? I don't know that that's the case. I think that if you look, I think it would be worse, but I don't know if it's materially worse. And what I mean is we still live in a ridiculous segregated country. The New York Times did a poll where they asked people, white people, um, how many of how many people believe that integration was a good thing? They said 85%. 85% of white people said that integration was a great thing. They then asked a different set of white people, or maybe it was the same set of white people. They, actually, they asked the same set of white people. I'm looking at it right now. How many of you lived in a neighborhood where there aren't any black people? 85% of them said that they live in a neighborhood where there weren't any black people. So they both agreed that integration was good, but they're essentially agreeing that it's good for somebody else. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of misnomers about how integrated the country is right now, period, from myriad different perspectives and different people. I don't think it's as integrated as people think that it is. It's definitely it's not. It's definitely not. We've talked about this in terms of the schools, in terms of the companies, it's significantly, significantly segregated. Yeah. Like, everywhere, including in this city. All right, the right to vote means nothing if you're gerrymandered to the point to where your voting power has been reduced to insignificance. Integration and diversity diversity counter that. I just, I don't agree with that. I think we're fighting right now, the Supreme Court is fighting right now to, <laughs> to draw lines where black people actually have representation. I think that the, the numbers don't bear out. Anyway, integration and working with open progressive white people in general is a big reason we've come as far as we have. Robert uh, replaced Kennedy, open, openly supported civil rights, or Johnson begrudgingly su supported civil rights with Andrew Jackson like a figure, like an Andrew Jackson-like figure, for example, and things look very different today. As to you specifically, though, there was a reason I prefaced my comments with Given the history of this country, as talented as we all believe ourselves to be, or that we wouldn't be, wouldn't have been susceptible uh, to the pitfalls of segregation or whatever historical ills of the time, the reality is we are all byproducts and beneficiaries of the history of this country and the environments it created and enabled, from where we live and go to school to where we work and start our families. You currently work for an incredibly wealthy white man in Bill Simmons, who himself works for another incredibly wealthy white man in Daniel X. The same holds true for your time at TMZ. In a, if integration never happens, uh, if integration never happens, uh, oh, excuse me, the Van Lathan we don't know, hold on, another white man, Daniel X, should I say. The same true ho holds true for your time at TMZ. If integration never happens, you're not working for either of those, these places, because they're likely not hiring anyone black. Why would they... Why would they when separate but equal is still the law of the land? Now, could there be a black version of TMZ or the ringer in this alternate history? Sure, but it's either going to be insignificant in size and scope or more likely going to be run out of business or burnt to the ground. The point is Van Lathan as we know him, literally the, Van Lathan as we know him today doesn't exist without the benefits of integration. Some version of him would exist but to, to be sure, but not the one producing Two Distant Strangers, which itself had white co-producers, which I'm aware of, and making podcasts at white-owned businesses, which, by extension, limits the success you could have in a segregated society. There's simply no way, no way around that. That's very well stated, okay? I think it's, there's a lot of interesting things into it, uh, that, that go into it. I also think this, that is wholly, 100% a white supremacist framework. There's no way around it. There just isn't. Wait, what is wholly a white supremacist? What he said or just the system we live in currently? The framework that he used to make the argument about my, what my about individual success would have been yeah. without integration. And I'll tell you why. And then okay. I'll get your take on this. Number one, um, prior to integration, there were really rich black people in America. There were people who had made uh, significant progress mm -hmm. in almost every area of American life. Mm -hmm. There were black business people. Mm -hmm. Okay. There were black singers, black writers, the entire, the entire Harlem Renaissance. Uh, there were black political leaders. There was a black success base 
that existed in America prior to integration. And when I say prior to integration, I don't just mean this intellectual, emotional, and spiritual integration. I mean when separate but equal was the law of the land, there were still black people that were able to succeed. So telling a black person, which I don't know if this guy's black or white, but telling a black person that their success is based in their proximity to whiteness is odd. I don't think that's what they were saying. What were they saying? I don't think that they're saying your success is is based on proximity to white people as if, like, you can't be successful or talented all on your own. Mm -hmm. I think within the system that we live in, which is white supremacy, that you can only go so far, is what I think that this, this person was saying. You talked about how successful we were as Black people prior to integration. I'm saying that there when, were successful Black people, yes, not as were, a whole. Yes, sure. were. Mm-hmm. You know, like when Plessy v. Ferguson was the law of the land. Mm-hmm. But what kept happening to black, successful Black people? Mm-hmm. People with power, white people, were tearing that away from us. The massacres that we've talked about. Sure. Burning down businesses, running people out of town. Um, telling lies on them to lynch them and, and you know, like uh, uh, criminalize things that they were doing. And I think what this person is saying is because of the system that we live in, which is run by white people, which is based on white supremacy, that as black people, because white people were against us and are in some ways, we could only go so far. Mm. That's what I felt like they were saying. And that's why they were saying your success would look different with integration not saying that you aren't amazing as an imp black man individually, but to exist within this racist society, there has to be some proximity to white people. Okay. So I don't accept that framework. Okay. I think that is precisely what I'm talking about in 90% of the arguments that we have. Correct. Like, with, this, like Carly. Podcast. Like when we, like right. with Carly. Right. I, I get what you're right. saying. I, I, I fundamentally don't believe that. And I actually don't believe that a society can be truly equitable if we accept that as being a truth in perpetuity. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying, number one, if we just looked at stats, numbers, Mm -hmm. we'd have to look at how Black people have been able to make strides compared to white people since integration. Mm -hmm. If we compare the numbers in terms of Black wealth all over the place, They're the same. In some measurements, they're worse. So integration has not helped Black people make up the disparities between them and white people. I agree. And so so what I'm saying is, if we know from a scientific standpoint that we're, as it relates to white people, we're not any closer to equality to them. But why? Because of... Structural racism. Because of structural racism. So, when I, so my point is, if I've succeeded in this structural racism, if you've succeeded in this structural racism, where there's still less successful Black people, I think it's presumptuous to say how successful either of us would have been. We don't know. With, with how, success, how, how, how successful either of us would have been through a framework um, that dip, looks different than what we're talking about. And understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about integration. It's important for me to, to d- define this. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about integration in terms of, um, I'm talking about a very specific cultural integration. And when I'm saying it was bad for black people. Oh, no, I agree with you. Right. So it's not, it's obviously not bad for black people to be able to work in spaces where there are white people. Right. What I'm saying is integration in terms of, hey, this is a black community where black people live, where black people work, where black people play, where black people go to the doctor. What we're going to do now is have this community be affected by the fact that those Black people now feel the need to integrate and assimilate into a society that doesn't want them. And so when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking about integration, I'm not necessarily, necessarily even talking about, uh, like, where you work. Because if I look around at a lot of places, uh, at a lot of places that I've worked mm-hmm. or have worked, mm-hmm. I have been the only Black person there Same. or... I have been in a very small, small percentage of Black people there. These places are just not as integrated as people think. And I think that when you have somebody say to you out loud, if we would have never, ever integrated, then there's just no way that you guys could have figured it out for your own. 
there specifically it is said in that retort. Yeah. Could there have been a black TMZ? Could there have been a black Spotify? Yeah, but to be honest with you, it probably wouldn't have worked. Like and and so what what I'm what I'm saying is I personally do not believe that. I believe that through solidarity, ingenuity, bravery, sure. And and um and unity. And unity uh that black communities can build thriving black structures, black political power, black economic power, um really black American. These are American structures, mm-hmm. American economic power mm-hmm. and just be happy, just be happy in places where they're not necessarily subject to the racism and to the perspectives of people who don't want them around. I don't think anything that you're saying is wrong. And I understand every single word that you're saying. And I think that the perspective that you're giving is more of a positive and hopeful one than the person who wrote that. And maybe even some of the things I say when, just like I said, the last podcast, we talked about Carly and and police and all of that. And I understood exactly what you were saying then. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was coming maybe from a more negative or this is currently how it is Mm -hmm. situation. And I think that if the, what that person's saying and what I do agree with on that side is if history has predictive value, every single time we rise up and we show our perseverance, our unity, our resilience, they take the powers that they have to destroy it. Mm. Has integration changed that? I'm not disagreeing with you. So then what difference does it make? I'm not, I'm just saying yeah. what they're speaking to. Mm. I see to- both, I I understand exactly what you're saying. I'm right. just saying that person is speaking of, well, if this is what history has shown us, then they're going to, then your success wouldn't happen because they would take it away from you. That's what I think that they're saying. Mm. And if that is what they're saying, I can see that point of view. Mm. But I wish I had your perspective more. Well, I think my, um, my perspective is, it's also informed by history as well. Number one, black people had persevered. Obviously, white... Yeah, they found benefits in all the negative things yeah, that bl- happened. Like, black people had <laughs> persevered, obviously. But I also say this. What, what I'm saying right now is that I'm not saying that we, we would have lived um, in communities where we didn't realize the, the realities of the world. Meaning... Sure, there are going to be uh, attempts to take what Black people have had. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is like, the flip side of that is you integrate. You move to a place where there are white people when you get successful. So in order to live in a place that has a, a, a nice tax rate, or, um, excuse me, that live in a place that has, like, great schools and stuff like that, you have to move to a white place, right? Right. So building the bigger home in the 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 community. Right. So I'm saying is that's the framework now, right? You have to move out of the hood. We're going to talk to Jason Martin probably a little bit later. He's going to talk about uh, uh, some of the reasons why he had to leave Compton or why you have to leave Compton. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a binary that exists there that says the only way to stop us from coming in and destroying your communities with firebombing and massacres is to have you integrate into ours and then making yours so shitty that no one will want to destroy it. Mm-hmm. All right? that Because essentially saying, hey, if you guys would have been together and built your own communities up, they would have just smashed them up anyway. What I'm saying to you now is, number one, they're smashing them up already. They're over-policing them. These places are food deserts. It just hasn't worked out. And there's, it's been problematic to build thriving black middle-class societies. There are some. They do exist. But not as many as you would have thought, right? And when you try to move into other places, you deal with structural racism. Sure. When you are a black person working in a white, white, white space, you deal with structural racism and marginalization. When you're a black woman dealing in these spaces. Yeah. So what I'm saying is the things that I've overcome to be who I am, I don't really think that it's anybody else's place to tell me that that had to do You're right. with, with integration. And I also think, and I don't know if this person is white, once again, that deep down, white people believe this. They think that black people can't do it without them. 
What I'm telling you right now is that we can. The only impediment is your racism, is your dominance, is your oppression. And if you're telling me that white people won't oppress us if we integrate, that's a lie. And if you're telling me that we should be okay with having societies that have less of an understanding of who they are, where they come from, or less of a black cultural ethos, and that that'll help white people not come destroy those societies, it's also a lie. Yeah. This is this is the last thing I'll say about it. I, I, I understand, like I've said multiple times, exactly what it is that you're saying. I think that it's wrong for someone to assume that you wouldn't be who you are without clo- being close to whiteness, proximity to whiteness. But I also think it's hard for that person who said that to see it any other way because this is the way that we've been living in for such a long time and because of the things that I said before about things that have happened to us in history. I think it's hard to see life without integration Mm. because this has been programmed into our minds for such a long time. This is the way we live. But I agree with you about structural racism too is at the root of all of it. So that, and that is something that maybe with in, the fight for integration, which I totally understand why we we did it, that wasn't considered. That it, it I think people thought integration would get rid of the system. They thought there was a cure. King himself it questioned cure it. all. So, I mean, we can, I thought that was very interesting. Very interesting. It is interesting. Um, all right. Got problem. Big time problem interview coming up. Uh, excuse me. Jason Martin. Used to be called problem. Nice Jason Martin. I'm going to call him Clay. I'm going to call him Clay. Oh, shout out to Prop. <laughs> talking to him, rapper from Compton. Jason Martin's album is out right now. Go listen to it. We're going to talk to him in a little bit. On the other side of this, big deal of the day, Ron DeSantis. Big deal of the day, Ron DeSantis. Uh, Ron DeSantis saying that slaves benefited from slavery. Donnie, give me the audio. Well, you should talk to them about it. I mean, I didn't do it, and I wasn't involved in it. Um, but I think, um, I think what they're doing is I think that they're probably going to show um, some of the folks that eventually parlayed, uh, you know, being a blacksmith into, into doing things later, later in life. Um, but the reality is all of that is rooted in whatever is factual. They listed everything out. And if you have any questions about it, just ask the Department of Education. You can talk about those folks. But, I mean, these were scholars who put that together. It was not anything that was, um, that was done politically. Hmm. Uh, what he's talking about, is new guidelines down there in Florida in terms of the social studies program for African-American studies that uh, look into some of the benefits that enslaved people got from slavery. Um, He was asked about that at a press conference that was Governor Ron DeSantis, and he said they're probably going to talk about the fact that maybe you learned how to be a blacksmith and how that (laughs) helped out. Those facts. Um, uh, Rachel, your thoughts? You know what it's giving? These are the nicest slave quarters in town. Oh, I love that. That's that's what it's making me think right now. Does any of this sound familiar to you? This positive twist on slavery and Black people and their history in this country? Nope? Okay. <laughs> in the 1830s, mm. John C. Calhoun... Ooh. Um, he gave a speech and it was called the positive good speech. Oh, very nice. And within this speech, and the reason that he was giving it, this is like 1830 something, is because the country was starting to really abolitionist, were, 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 they were becoming more loud and really talking about how bad slavery was and how unnecessary. And some people were even starting to call it a sin. Mm. Even some people in the South. And there was this growing sentiment about slavery. And obviously, slaves were a huge economic benefit for the South. And people didn't want this to take fire. So John C. Calhoun gives this speech where he refers to slavery as a positive good. Hmm. And within this, he talks about, and I'm paraphrasing here, how slavery was a blessing how it exposed exposed Blacks to Western civilization, and it took them out of their savage state, and it protected them. Oh, nice. Um, He talked about the benefits of slavery, 
And he taught, and then they even would have cartoons that would show slaves having a good old time pre Disney. Oh, wow. Slay, I mean, maybe this is, you know, the remember the songs of the South? Remember yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah. that zippity doo dah zippity been on, day? Uh, if you've ever been on the Jungle Cruise, maybe, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but they would show these cartoons that would show a watered down version of what, how black people were experiencing life on the plantation. And it would show them happy and smiling. And it was as if the slave owners weren't treating them as slaves, they were treating them as extension, an extension of the family. Hmm. And they were being cared by their owners, and their owners only wanted the best for them. And they talked about, and in the speech, he talked about how slaves were this inferior race and how they civilized them and they improved their lives morally, physically, and intellectually. Wow. How this special. is in the 1830s. Hmm. Fast forward to 2023. Yeah. And this is why it's years. history is so important. Because what Ron DeSantis and the Florida Department of Education are doing is basically repeating history. They are mm. changing what was actually happened, which we, which actually, I'm mean, excuse me, what actually happened, which we know as we have talked about the horrors of slavery and what went down on plantations. And now they are trying to whitewash and water it down and make it say, hey, we're actually going to show you that it was not a bad thing for all slaves. You know, they had the nicest slave quarters in town. Nicest slave quarters in town. Nicest. You know, they actually received some skills that they couldn't have received in Africa, as if they were, as John C. Calhoun said, savages, as if they weren't doctors and ta artists and intellectuals and all these other things, beautiful things that they were in Africa. No, they were just running around mindlessly doing things until they were brought here and mm. put on a plantation and they were able to get some good things. That's why this all sounded familiar to me. Now, I love that. Take it back to the history, Big Rage. Mm -hmm. Big Rage, the history teacher. Um, there's been a lot of talk about this, and I posted something um, on on uh, on Instagram that actually got wrong. Okay, Donnie, play the Kim Daniels quote. And you can talk about the Holocaust, but the Jews own everything. I thank God for slavery. Mm. I thank God for the crack house. If it wasn't for the crack house, come on somebody, God wouldn't have never been able to use me how he can use me now. And if it wasn't for slavery, I might be somewhere in Africa worshiping a tree. Oh. Okay, so that's Kim Daniels. She's a Jacksonville Democrat. She's on the board that helped to formulate this black history standard, uh, these black history standards that uh, have gone into effect in Florida. Right now, I posted that and I said, hey, it's no wonder that these standards are uh, as they are. Yeah, somebody like Kim Daniels on there, right? She thanks God for slavery, so, you know, it's going to have a problem with it. She actually zagged. Uh, today, Florida politics, she spoke out against these standards. She said, in fact, I was never consulted about these standards. I disagree with and would have immediately challenged and resisted any notion that slavery was a benefit to African Americans, she said. I'm a black woman who was born in the early 60s. I understand the atrocities of racial oppression and Jim Crow. I lived it. Um, she's before turning her attention to a statement that she made years ago. She said, to thank God for slavery, a political ploy was taken out of context from a message I preached 15 years ago. She's an evangelist. The message was not about slavery, but about overcoming obstacles in life as a believer of Jesus Christ. Taking it out of that setting and putting it in any other set context is simply slanderous. I do not agree with that. I think that if you utter those words, you got to stand on that. However, it is interesting to note that she did not approve of these standards. Uh, this is what I'll say. Um, let's accept the framework here. Let's accept it. That you were a slave, you didn't know how to do shit, and then you became a black thing, a, black, a, a, a blacksmith. How did it benefit you? Mm -hmm. So you have the skill. Right. right. You know how to be a blacksmith. What good is being a blacksmith if you can't afford an anvil? Right? Mm -hmm. um, what good is being a farmer and learning how to farm, learning how to harvest indigo or cotton or tobacco if you're sharecropping the land? What good is having a trade if you can't build wealth with that trade? Mm -hmm. um, wealth without freedom, what good is that? Freedom without wealth. What good is that? Okay. Um, the term benefit is doing a lot of work here for me. Hmm. Because benefit to me means something different 
for black people than it means for white people. Okay. Uh, when white people say benefit, a lot of times, when white supremacy, let me do it like this. Let me not indict all the white people in the world right here. Just, <laughs> just shout it out, white people. Did you a little solid right there. When white, when white supremacy says benefit, they mean them and not you. Okay. See, when we're talking about benefit, we're talking about something that can help us. Mm -hmm. Something that then makes our lives better. When white supremacy uses the term benefit, what they're saying is, you were a savage and I corrected you. You were nothing and I made you whole. Mm -hmm. You didn't know how to do shit, but now you're a blacksmith. Look at you. Even if having that skill and being a blacksmith because of all kinds of other structures that are around means no different in your ability to build any wealth for yourself, to have any freedom for yourself, to, to ply your trade. It's still a benefit that you are not the blind, deaf, and dumb uh, savage that you were when I met you. So even in the term that they're using right there, they're saying something that only makes sense through a white yeah. supremacist framework. In the system of capitalistic exploitation that we have, you only matter if you have a trade. You only matter. But it doesn't matter if that trade makes you rich. It doesn't matter if that trade brings you any freedom. It only matters if that trade benefits the greater white-driven, white supremacist engine that exists here in America. So even, the, even to say, hey, these people were benefiting, how? How were they benefiting? Even if everybody became a fucking farmer, mm -hmm. even if everybody became a fucking blacksmith, even if everybody became a tailor because they had to sew, um, uh, sew up masses fucking clothes, even if everybody became, knew how to cook because they had to make the cornbread and the fried chicken and all of that, could they open a restaurant? Could right. they open a tailor shop? Could they actually do use these skills that you say that they learn, right, to benefit their actual lives? Mm -hmm. No. We know, in fact, that it was the opposite. We know, in fact, that Black people were significantly involved in the inventions of all kinds of things during slavery that made their lives better. We know that it was a Black man um, that invented, that showed Jack Daniels how to distill his liquor. We know that he had that knowledge. But we also know that for 150 some odd years, Jack Daniels didn't even recognize him. The guy's name is Uncle Nearest. There's now a fucking liquor named after him. Shout out to that lady. That's very good. Go get some Uncle Nearest, right? So we know that it doesn't matter what skills you accumulated. Mm -hmm. Nothing would benefit you because you were not a citizen. Exactly. So... The wide gap in understanding of the lives of enslaved people and the lives of black people after slavery is, is breathtaking. It's very breathtaking. It's very, it's, it's interesting. I looked at some of the other stuff here in, in this, right? There's some other things here. So I looked at the curriculum. Yes. Yes. The, yes, there are other things. Woo! The curriculum is doing a lot of work here, guys. One of the clarifications in this, in this curriculum is, in the Black History curriculum, is understanding and instructing kids on how trading slaves developed in African lands. Benin and Dahomey. Instruction includes the practice of the Barbary pirates and kidnapping Europeans and selling them into slavery in Muslim countries. Muslim slave markets in North Africa, West Africa, the Swahili Coast, the Horn of Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and Indian Ocean. Why do you think that we're talking about Say that? Say it again. Sorry. <laughs> How slavery was utilized in Asian cultures. Instruction uh, includes the similarities between serfdom and slavery and the emergence of the term slave in the experience of Slavs, Slavs who are white. Yeah. Instruction includes how slavery among indigenous peoples of the Americas was utilized prior to... Oh, uh, okay. ...and after... European colonization. You guys, what does it seem like they're doing? 
it wasn't us. We didn't start it. They're what about in this entire thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't. We this was happening before. This was that. This was started by, by other cultures, not us. We're simply doing what they did. Nobody thinks that America started slavery. No one who has any <laughs> grasp of history thinks that. What we do think, and what I do think, is the type of slavery here. One was particularly brutal. And the chattel slavery, where your kid is born into slavery and all of that stuff, there are aspects of it that are an American invention. I also think that's something else. The type of slavery and what came after that slavery that is material to the current existence of Black Americans in this country is American chattel slavery. And we can discuss slavery all over the world. I'm not mad at a slavery course in school. I don't care about it. But I don't think that any of those examples have a place in an African-American history class because, to be honest with you, with very few caveats, of course, the homie, Neen, all of those places, we have to learn how the slaves got to where they were going, Africans selling other Africans. But most of this is to lessen the blow. Of course. And absolve. That's the word. Western European savages from the unspeakable horrors that they enacted on my ancestors. And I'll say it very clearly so people hear me with no mincing of any words. Your ancestors the ones that brought mine over here on boats and raped them and killed them and cut their appendages off and drowned them, made them fight each other to the death, were low-down, bloodthirsty demons. And there is fucking no way around it. We can do all the work that we want to do. We can have all the talk that we want to talk. If, we want, if you want to talk about how other people were acting 100 years before then, 200 years before then, 500 years before them, fine. If you want to talk about how people are acting now, shooting each other in faith, fine. The truth still remains that the wholesale capture and sale of people, the rape of them, the taking of their humanity was done by a bunch of subhuman demons. And there's no amount of education that can run from that fact. Sure. You're mad at Ron DeSantis. You're not going to vote for him now. <laughs> oh, now. So this was this is what tipped, uh, pushed me over the edge yeah. to no longer want to vote for. You're not going to vote for him now. Oh, DeSantis. We got one more topic. We got a Jason problem interview at the end of this. We got one more topic. Uh, we got to do this. We got to do this topic. It's a very uncomfortable topic. We got to do it, Rach. It's very uncomfortable. You ready? No. Okay, Jess Hilarious. Got a little hot water. She's a comedian, very funny lady. You know Jess Hilarious, right? Yes, familiar with her. You've, you've watched her stuff? It's funny? I watch her on Wild and Out. It's very funny. Very funny lady. Quick, pithy, She's witty, quick. all that. Mm -hmm. uh, she made a video in response to a trans woman mm -hmm. that had some things to say about menstrual cycles. I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with this whole thing. And womanhood. And womanhood. Probably a better way to say it. No, no. She, spe she distinguished between the two. So, both. She distinguished what? She said, she, the, the, the trans woman who was speaking talked about menstruation and womanhood. Womanhood. Sorry, womanhood. I lost my Menstruation and womanhood. Okay, so we're going to play you the whole clip in... Uh, what the trans lady said, this was on TikTok or somewhere, mm -hmm. and Jess Hilarious's response that has got a lot of people talking. Donnie, run it. I mean, when the transphobia just comes out, the audacity and just the, the, the arrogance for cis women to believe that they own periods, that they own womanhood, you don't. Okay, you don't own periods, you don't own womanhood. You experience both, and both are different for every person, but as a cis woman, it doesn't belong to you, so you can't gatekeep it. Like, hello? 
Hello. Who the fuck is going to stand up for us? <laughs> Who the fuck stands up for us? And us... I mean women, real women, biological women, women who were born with all the parts that you guys wish that you were. Um, when does the delusion stop? What is the difference between um, you and someone who has been um, diagnosed to be mentally insane? What's the, the only difference is you don't have a straight jacket on. Stop talking out your fucking ass. Wake up. How are you projecting your anger? On real women, because we are the gatekeepers. We are the gatekeepers for periods. We the only one that fucking bleed, honey. We the only ones that can give birth. We make y'all people. We make y'all. Y'all come from us. You can't be us. You will never. You're chasing something you'll never, ever get. You'll never be that. Woo! A lot going on there, Rach. I don't want it. What you got? Nothing. <laughs> I don't want it. I'm telling you, I don't agree with with with. Certain things that Jess said, I think she took it too far in, in, in what she had to say. But I guess I just don't even understand the original video. And, I, and, and, and the reason I keep saying I don't want to talk about it is because I'm scared to talk about it. Like, I don't oh. want to say, I don't want to offend anyone. You know, I support um, trans people. I support women. Obviously, I identify as a woman. But I don't want to say anything where I'm putting us against one another or stepping on anyone's toes. This is why I don't want to talk about it. But I don't understand having a conversation, and this is where somebody can come in and, and correct me, of the first video of coming, coming after women and saying, you don't own, you know, periods, you don't own womanhood. I just wish, like, where is the lane that supports both? That's the lane I want to hop in. I want to support Women, and I want to support people who identify as women. I want to support trans people. And I just want to have a conversation where we can stop coming at each other and support one another. And that's why I say, I like, I get nervous even talking about it because I don't want to offend anybody because I generally support everyone. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Hmm. Um, I'm going to be... Genuinely support everyone is what I was about to say. I'll be honest with you, man. You really are a woman, cause you pussy as hell, man. You you straight, that was straight pussy, man. You drop your, I'm a, let, let me let me get let me get let me get toxic, a little saji saji. We haven't had enough saji on this episode. I've been, I haven't yeah, been. Yeah, you saji. just call me a pussy. Yeah, well, look, uh, now it's, it's I'm getting saji, man. It's time for some saji. Drop your nuts on these people. Let them know what you think. I just did. Donnie, give them, give Rachel a, you know what I'm saying? Give them a clear out. Drop your nuts, Rachel. Tell these people what you think. Why don't you go ahead and do it, Saji? Nope. Saji? Nah, I don't want to. Look, I, this is what I will say. I'm obviously I'm joking. I think that what you said yes, is I like know. <laughs> very, very. Let's be clear. Let's no be clear. Reddit posts on clear, that. Guys. We know he's joking. It's a joke. Oh, I really hate when Van gets fuck up. I'm just no, I love you guys. I'm sorry. I reverted, but I'm not gonna do it again. Um This is what I'll say. You know when you watch something and you're uncomfortable with the way something's being articulated mm -hmm. because you know the way it's going to affect someone, mm -hmm. because you know that it's going to make someone feel bad or incensed or mad, even if it doesn't directly have to do with you. I felt that way in both videos. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to say what I'm going to say. I felt that way in both videos. I think that Jess in her response was probably being true to her actual feelings. Um, I'm not, I don't think she was probably being true. I think she was being true. But the way she responded was so minimizing Perfect that word. there is space in there for people who do not wish the best for uh, trans women and men who wish them harm, who wish them oppression, who hope that they kill themselves. Um, there was space in there for those people to spike the football from what Jess said. Um, the video that she was responding to was, to me, incredibly unproductive. The anger in which that video is made, first of all, I'm not at all policing anybody's anger. I'm not. 
I will say this. I'm not a woman, so I don't know how this feels. Uh, but if I'm being honest, there are people who look at that just in a real way. I'm not saying that I'm one of these people. There are people who look at that as a man telling women about their bodies. Now, guys, I need everybody to breathe. I understand the science here. I understand that human beings are complex and intricate characters. And I understand that because of that, there are people who are intersex. There are people who have uh, different combinations of, of biological identities. And because of that, the feeling and the imperative that someone has that they are of a different sex is real. It's not something that people have made up in their minds. Right. It's not something that's not true. It's real. It, you, we get to a point when in understanding the human body where science almost becomes magic because there are some things that as much as we do that we have yet to understand. And I think what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do our best as people who want the best for everyone to understand, put our arms around, protect, and lift up a segment of our population who is asking for, check that, demanding their rights and telling us how they're here and how they want to be received. Mm -hmm. I completely understand that. We're having these conversations gently and delicately, and we're having them, to me, with uh, an imperative um, and with a, a, an intent for everyone to better understand each other. And I don't think the, uh, the woman in the first video did that. I don't think that that was something to me that, um, that was productive. And neither did Jess. Neither did Jess. Now, I'll say this. Maybe she wasn't trying to be productive. Maybe she was trying to beat people over the head with this idea. I don't really know what to make of the idea because I'm not a woman. So I'm not saying she has to talk nice because I don't talk nice. But what I am saying is we're talking about the fundamentals of people's bodies. And I think that there are probably a lot of, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I have not talked to one woman that I know that didn't have a problem with that video. I'm just going to be honest. Well, like, I'm just is, being for, I, I'm not, not, not going to talk to To make the same one. mistake that we did with Neil, we got Jess Hilarious's entire video. I have no idea what the first video was in Fair response enough. to. I don't know what it was based on. We got, we took that one snippet. So if we're going to be, you know, consistent in this podcast, I have no idea what, I didn't like it when I saw it either, but I'm like, what was she referring to? What was she talking about? Donnie, do we even have the entire video? I have not seen anybody show it. So I don't know if her video was in response to something somebody else said. Before we get out of we here, don't know. Let's, let's actually try to see if we can get the entire video. Let's see if we can find it somewhere. Johnny, can you do that real quick? And yeah, I'm Googling. And Donnie, while you're doing that, I'll just say this. Why are you doing that? A lot of times on this podcast, I have to give an apology rating. And I don't think I've ever given an apology rating better than a two, maybe a one. It's always bad. It's always bad because I don't think that they're... I don't think that they, they're always after the fact, which most apologies are, but they just don't meet. If I had a standard, they don't meet it. Well, Kev on stage, which I'm familiar with, you're familiar with mm -hmm. as well. Kev on stage, comedian Kevin Fredericks. He responded to a tweet from a, from a user with an apology. Now, this is what happened. Um, her name is Midnight Persona. She said, today I was reminded how how years ago a black man made fun of me on this very popular YouTube channel for cosplaying Chun-Li, putting me in his funny video reel, dubbing me Chunk-Li, and caused me to never want to cosplay her again. 
And then she says, goes on to say, anyway, all this to say, don't let stupid people stop you from doing what you do. I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't put keep pushing. Now I'm guesting and speaking to people at cons. So Kevin on stage responded. Now, he gave a very lengthy apology. I don't want to go through all of it, mm-hmm. but I just want everybody to take the opportunity to read it. It's, it's at Kev on stage on, on his Twitter feed. I'm going to give this apology a 10 out of 10. What? And I will tell you why. This is a, an example from start to finish of how an apology should go. He starts off making no excuses, just straight up apologizing. Then he acknowledges her pain. Then he agreed with her criticism of him that she gave. And he went on to say, listen, I'm not the same person, but he did not use that as a reason to defend who he used to be. Then he goes on to spell out all oh, Excuse me. He goes out to spell out. He goes on to spell out all the things that he learned between posting that years ago to where he is now, showing that he did the work all the way in between then and now. And then says that he still acknowledges that he has more that he could learn. Mm. He ended his tweet with an apology and then congratulated her on all her success and then went on to encourage his followers to not defend him. Mm. It was a perfect apology. Wow. 10 out of 10. Don't ask me any more questions about apologies if they don't meet these standards. So that so what you're saying now is that Kev on stage is the gold standard for apologies. The gold standard. I gotta Shout tell out, you something. Sh- like, hmm? I gotta tell you something. I'm glad. This is a monumental day in higher learning history. Rachel, we were starting to think that it couldn't happen. Well. We're starting to think that it couldn't happen. And now look at us. Look at us. I don't know if it'll happen again. What's the name? What's the lady's name again? Her name is Midnight Persona. Okay, so Midnight Persona is, I'm going to look, because I want to do something here. But she spells Persona P-U-R-S-O-N-A. So I'm looking at Midnight Persona here. Oh, her name is Kalika. Um, I'm looking at Midnight Persona here. I'm going to give my Midnight Persona a follow. Okay. And what I want to make sure that we do, because Kev asked us to do this. Oh, he did? (laughs) No, he didn't ask us to follow her. He asked us to do one thing. I want to make sure that we make this about the person who was hurt. For sure. And not about the man who apologized. And I'm not saying you were doing that. No, I know. I was just doing my rating. Yes, yes. You were doing your rating. I got you. And I want to make sure that you guys see here that Midnight Persona, despite what anyone has said about her, I'm looking at her is living her best life. I see her here as Winnie the Pooh. I see her here as Elsa from Frozen. Okay? Um, I'm looking at this black, queer, disabled lady, okay, living her best life and as proud as anyone should be um, for uh, for uh, uh, Kev on stage for the fact that he got his apology right. I'm also making sure that the entire higher learning audience is as proud of this amazing, beautiful black woman who persevered through all, all of the negativity she might have gotten and is happy and healthy and living her best life. So we support you, Midnight Persona. We support you. We support you for living out loud and not taking no shit off nobody. I'm looking at all of the stuff that she's got here. All I see is Tommy Chong because Twitter sends you, I blocked Tommy Chong like three fucking times, man. Twitter sends you all kinds. Donnie, have you, were you able to find that? Yeah, I found this uh, person's TikTok, but I can't find why, what initiated that, uh, that first uh, video. Is I'm the video seeing that it there? was a resurfaced video. No, it was old. So it dates back from a couple of years ago. But um, they've been responding to the current conversation that's going on. And it seems like they're doubling down. And I, I really don't know like what it sparked it in the first place, though. Question. What's, what's her name? Blessing Rose. Should we book? Should we book book Blessing Rose? Should we book her? I'll say it again. Yeah. Should we book Blessing Rose? Absolutely. Let's book her. Donnie, 
Let's see if we can get Blessing Rose on here. And let's get to see if we can get some kind of context to what is this is a resurfaced video. Why the video came about. Was she responding? Was she speaking out against something that happened? What we need to understand the why. Or, or, to be honest with you, if we just need to be educated more on this. Well, I think that would that would be a part of it, right? Right. Whatever she has to say would be the education. And I'm not even sure if I got the pronouns right, so please, like, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure how she, they identify. Right. So let's do this. Let's book Blessing Rose. Um, and we'll get Blessing Rose on here if it's possible. And we'll have a conversation about this. Right. We'll have a conversation to try to get better at creating spaces where we can all live together and protect one another. Because here's the deal. The goal isn't just to live with one another. It's to protect one another. Mm, love it. Rachel, uh, we got to go. Um, yeah, we got to go. Yeah, it's over. What, 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 are your, what are your thoughts on life? That we got to go. Yeah, but what else? Say something else. <laughs> all right, anyway. <laughs> uh, we're going to throw the problem real quick. It's a nice, chunky, long interview. Um, a lot of stuff in here with... Uh, well, I keep calling him Problem. His name is not Problem. No, but disrespect. His name is Jason Martin. He used to be known as Problem. He is a rapper from Compton. We got a lot more podcasts coming up for you guys. Check out this interview. We got problem. Jason, Jason Martin, guys. Jason, Jason Martin. Martin. Yes. About Jason now. But, 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 okay, so look, yes. let's let's talk about that first. Yes. First, first of all, yes. before we get into anything, welcome to Higher Learn. Man, mm. thank you guys for having me. We've been trying to get this a, a few mishaps. We finally got together. Yes. Shout out to Kylie, man. Come on, shout out to Kylie. Shout out to Kylie, man. Come on, man. Kylie hooked me up back in the day. She gave me the whole Mitchell and Ness package. Mm -hmm. oh. You ever seen them Lakers shorts that mm -hmm. I wear? Yeah, it's Kylie hooked me up with them, man. Okay. That's how I met Lauren, which is her partner. They both met. Lauren. Me. Yes, they mm -hmm. gave me a crazy Mitchell and pack. People still ask me where I get them shorts. That's how Kylie get you. Kylie works with the brothers, and she lures them in with the Mitchell and Ness. <laughs> <laughs> um, so talk about that real quick. I've known you as Problem for as long as I've been in L.A. Yeah. Been hearing your music around town, hearing your music as a fan of hip-hop, hearing you on the radio, also knowing that your pen is mightily respected in this game in terms of what you've been able to do as a spooky writer, is what I call him, a ghost writer. Um, I collaborate. I don't collaborate. ghost write. I you, collaborate. You collaborate. I See, collaborate. See, that's the way you're supposed to do that's it. That's nice to Why say Why the move way? from Problem, which was such, which is a moniker that you uh, spent so much time cultivating to Jason Martin? I just thought at this stage of the game, this age I'm at, I just think it's kind of irresponsible to keep titling myself something like Problem. You know what I'm saying? I... I you are you are your name. And I'm already fighting against every kind of fucking demon coming at me. Problem, I'm from Compton, I got tattoos. The raps I've done before, the Mollywood stuff, it's like it's just so many things in your face when you first get there. It's like, let's let's really draw it back down. My, and my name is dope. Jason Martin, man, I want to try to build on what my family's last name in history, what it was, you know what I'm saying? My father told me you got two first names because you was never meant to be last. So I got to stay that and stay on that. Mm. You we'll be saying? using that. I am Rachel Lindsay. Come Thank on. you so yeah, much. Yeah, my pops told me that. He was like, man, don't yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, that shit don't work for me. <laughs> <I'm a man. laughs> <laughs> but I do my, my, got a potty name, Lathan. Okay. So, so all three of us. Come on now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All three so, of us. It was more that just for business, I, I think it was, a, it was a good time for the rebirth and the rebrand, new stuff that I'm doing. You got a potty name, Lathan? Yeah. From out here? Yeah, he's from out here. Who is his mama? No, his mom, I ain't gonna speak on that. But he is very successful. He's one of the uh three, three CEOs of of uh generation now. Where's he from? He's out the out the uh, Crenshaw district outside. Okay. Cause who do you think why like, do you think you know so, him like so, that? So, so is his name Lathan? It's Lathan. L A T H A N? Let me check. I, the only, you know it's I'm either Layton, you know, it's either Layton or Layton. You know why I'm asking that? Why? Cause I got family out here, and when we used to live, we lived in Hawthorne for two years, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my aunts, her daughter, named her son Layton because, and he was, but when we was out here, he was a lot younger than me. He had been around your age, same kind of deal. Named his son Layton. She named her son Layton after, like. Uh, family name. The family name. So the family name will rain. I don't know. It could be. Like, and again, I, we've been calling him Lake Sheezy forever. It's L A K E. <laughs> but his name is Layton. <laughs> so I don't know if we just Negro pronounce him saying Layton and just leave. You know how we just put. 
You know, I mean? people call me Jason, and there's no yeah. E or I in my name. It's kind of like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, I still love you, bro. If I didn't do it right, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're covered somewhere in between <laughs> this week, later, Lathan. And what's the other name? Um, Lathan. Is either no, Lathan or Lake? No, no. What do y'all call him? Lake. Lake. Lake, Lake or Lake, Lake Cheesy. Lake He's Cheesy. um, it's him, D- DJ Drama, and Cannon. That that generation now. Yeah. 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 So, you, you know Lathan. Shout out to Drama, man. Shout out to Drama. Okay. Look you see Lay light skin, wearing all the jewelry. Yeah, yeah, Not yeah, canon, yeah, not yeah. drama, but... Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, you talk, You changed your name. Not yeah. changed your name. You went back to yeah. Jason Martin. Mm-hmm. You have a new album. It's called I Owe Myself. Yes. Is that part of... And you talked about going on this journey with mm-hmm. creating this album. Was, is the name change part of that? And talk about this journey that you went on to create this album, which is great, Thank by you. the way. Um, and why? Um, Totally. Big part of it. I owe myself this moment. I owe my family this moment. I owe my name this moment. I've done a lot uh, for the business and just I've always been more of a helper for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I've 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 been a part of creating other people's version of what success looks like. Um, and I feel like I owe myself this moment to do it my way, all the way from the sonics to what I talk about to the way I put it out. And even with a new name change, I, I thought it would be, and thought, a word I hate to use, but I thought it would be tough to put out this style of music under the name Problem. Because I've had success as Problem, um, I'm a victim of it. You want to hear the turned up fun stuff that I've done that worked very well for me. This is a total switch. Not saying it's not fun, it's just a lot more musical, a lot more in-depth, a lot more storytelling. So I thought this was the perfect project to begin the name change with. Do you worry that this album is too good for people to fuck with it? Um, Because what, what I mean by that is, when I heard this, it is different from the music that I've heard from you before. Mm-hmm. It is melodic. Mm-hmm. It is songs like Weekend Dad, mm-hmm. you know, that are really very introspective. Yeah. It kind of puts you in the category of West Coast artists that beyond Kendrick, it sometimes seems like people don't want to really fuck with. Totally. Like West Side and the other, I say West Side Boogie in every single interview. Yeah. But it's so fucking dope that it might not be accessible to some of the hip hop fans and some of the the, the the rap that's out there right now. Do you worry about that? Definitely. You definitely worry about that. Um, but you can't care. This is the uh. art. This is what it's about. And and real art will win at some point. It may happen when I'm not here. Who knows when it will catch, but somebody is gonna take that weekend dad song and it's gonna make them a better person. They're gonna put this song when they need that soundtrack for their life. I can't be concerned about what was. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I want everybody to hear it. I want it to be this big commercial success. But at the end of the day, the consumer is picking what's what right now. So it's on the consumer. Right now, the consumer doesn't want to be that smart. Hmm. So it's on them at the end of the day. But just know this shit comes in sections. Like Kendrick, Cole, Wale, they came to the beginning of the decade. Then now we went through that other shit where it was just more, I'll just say more fun. Hmm. We're now getting back to people wanting to have just a little more thoughtful fucking shit to listen to. And I want to be right there in that midst of it. And it, and I honestly, as a creative, I can't care like that. I have to go in with what I feel like at that time and just pray that it goes the way I want it to go. Hmm. Where did you, first off, we we the smart ones because we liked it. You said the consumer. Well, the well show, yeah, I'm not even speaking. Like, you guys, <laughs> no, I mean, you guys are, no, but no, I'm saying that because you know what? You guys are in, a, in an interesting seat. You guys have can sway judgment because you guys behind the mic, you have people that listen to you guys and they'll yeah. say, well, yeah, fans have, I should fuck with it. I'm going to go listen to it. So you guys are not the consumer. I'm talking about the day-to-day person that consumes music. They go to their Spotify playlist, and whatever that's there, whatever is there, that's what they're going to listen to. Mm-hmm. I can't control that. So it's on the programmers. It's on, it's on, you guys are going to tell people what y'all want them to fucking hear at the end of the day. Mm. So it's either get on the good side of these people, or the consumer has to wisen up and say, well, I don't want to just hear that. I want to hear this too. Mm-hmm. What's the in, what was the inspo behind creating this album? Because it is different from what we've seen you mm-hmm. do before or heard you do before. Just wanting to do something completely different. Okay. I've been dying to put out music like this. But again, I don't want to use the word victim, but a victim of my success. Of, and, and then, honestly, once you become a business, it's like, it's like okay, let's say Pepsi. The, the guy that owns Pepsi, man, I want to fucking try hot chocolate. But Pepsi is working like crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? You get to this point where you've been double-dutching with wanting to do hot chocolate for so long, but Pepsi is working. 
I, I just had to say, fuck it. We have to start doing hot chocolate now because this is the way I feel. At this age, I got older children. The fact that I can send this, this project to my children and they like it, they can listen to it and I hear their dad talking about pussy and shit that I used to talk about. That was the win for me more so than if it sold a million copies. Mm. Mm. You know, it was it was a different goal. It was a different end goal for this project. It was more so like, listen, let me show you guys that even the Mollywood guy can think at some point. You know what I'm saying? And and let us, let the chips fall where they may. What's wrong with hip hop right now? I'm asking that because we're seeing less chart success, mm -hmm. even though there's so much more music. We're also seeing people canceling tours. So some of these artists that we think are really pop, and then that's not a shot to anybody. Yeah. They're not being able to fill up these venues. What's making the music not connect? The jug is up. Mm. We can't keep standing behind these numbers and, and thinking that's what makes it good. And that's what's happening. Um, the pandemic may have put an extension cord on the jug that was being ran, but I mean, we all know that we can forge numbers and make them look like however we want them to look. If you've been in this business long enough, you can tell who what label cares about you by how much they're running your shit up. Now that's up because now you can't just go hide behind a uh, 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 headliner and get on his tour, or you can't just go jump onto a Rolling Loud and then film yourself. You probably went on fourth, but it's 40,000 people out there. Mm. You can't keep fooling the consumer. You can't keep fooling people with fake numbers. Again, good and bad is subjective. I'm not here to say what's good or what's bad, but I know that I ain't heard no 100 million, 500 million people playing Lil So-and-So's song. <laughs> I want little and put whatever name you want. That's Cap. Y'all not gonna make me believe that, especially when I know I can go hire somebody to run my shit up right now. Mm. It's over. Now you have to be good. At this point, you have to be relatable. That's why the older guys, veterans, people like myself, we're still able to do shows and tours because we were actually selling records. Like mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. had to like buy it and then it's yours. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You've been able to create this favoritism type thing um, where if this person is on this many lists or if this person is seen in this many spots, oh, they're popping. They're not even listening no more. We more so watch the numbers. How many times have y'all went on somebody's page? Not you, but okay, the video is about to start, but it may only have a thousand views. You're like, it oh, makes this you shit, think that nobody shit, wants to hear. You yeah. ain't even. You haven't even. You haven't even. You already have made your decision. Mm -hmm. Or you seen somebody post a pic, and that pic doesn't have as many likes as you think it should have. Oh, he ain't popping. Mm. The numbers, the fabricated numbers that you can buy is what's been swaying the consumer. The minute you remove those numbers, this shit goes back to normal. Mm. I feel like it's not even fair for me as a business that my numbers are on display. Like, I can't go into McDonald's and say, hey, how much y'all made today? Let me see your books. Mm. My shit, you can go look at how many listeners I had today. That's not fair. Right. What if I'm growing this business slowly? What if I don't have the Interscope bag behind it? What if I don't have the QC bag behind it? And for me, this 100,000 views is paying a bit, or this 100,000 is doing this, or this 500,000 really works, because I only probably paid $100 to get this done. You get what I'm saying? It's it's all that. We've given too much information to the consumer, so now they're not even fans no more. They're more so like, they're like mediators of, oh yeah, did you see he has a, he did th uh, 30 million streams today. Let's go check that out. Mm. What? Mm. That doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. Mm. And I think that's the problem, and it's translating into sales. Like, I'm not paying five hundred dollars to go see Lil Woo Woo, who only got three songs perform. Mm. Mm. I um piggybacking on what you were saying, I was reading an article that was talking about the biggest problems in the rap, hip hop industry right now. Mm -hmm. Some of the things they listed were oversaturation, lack of creativity, culture vultures, um, free beat producers. Do you agree with that? And if so, why or why not? I, I, I don't know if I agree. I just think, I mean, you can't, you can't knock a kid that's trying to get on. Like, if he if he's giving, if, if Drake likes this guy's beat and he saw it on YouTube, you're gonna stop him from getting the money? Like, that's not fair to him. Somebody actually liked it. Um, free, all that. Man, the music is free now. So how are you gonna get mad at somebody giving the beat away for free? As far as oversaturation, there's no gatekeepers in this thing no more. So anybody can come play. It's kind of like 
why this uh this this strike is going on with the movie and film industry. Sure. Yeah. That union is is creates the gatekeepers to keep just anybody can't hop this fence and get in. We don't have that here. So anybody like to like tomorrow if the young man that's over there behind the booth that's handling that, if he puts up this dope song and the right person retweets it, now he can be on the same playlist as Rihanna. Mm. That's crazy. <laughs> Not in a in a bad way, but that's still insane yeah. for somebody who's been working for 15 years to get that spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then just really think about it. It really takes from, from seed to store. It takes about three months. You got to go write the record, record the record, mix the record, master the record, shoot the video for the record, get the record, edit it, distribute it for it to come out and you can't even say how much it is. It has to go in here in this lot with millions and millions and millions of other artists. It's crazy. Mm. It's a crazy thought for somebody that really treats this as a real profession. You know what I'm saying? I think it's a little of everything you're saying. I don't think it's necessarily an artist problem, though. I, I, I would say all artists create create as much as possible. If you had a chance to become, do what a major does just because the rules are changed, go for it. Like right now, I have independent films. People are reaching out to me to put them on streamers. What am I supposed to say? Not take the money because the strike that's going on? I've been dying to put this film out. You get what I'm saying? So I understand it. It's just, we, it's, something has to be figured out. I think it's really the numbers thing. The fact that you can see everybody's numbers is where we get this weird lo- loss of control, I'll say. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you shot your movie before the strike, nobody should have a problem with you. No, I'm just saying, yeah. though. But just really, what about somebody that's just like, man, I've been dying to do films, and now these companies are calling me to put it up. They're going to get their asses kicked if they scab out. But they, don't, they don't care. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't even know. The they, they don't well, care. They're going to get their listen, asses kicked if they scab out. Listen, Jason. Only, listen. <laughs> only people who are scared of that is the people that ever thought they were going to get in there anyway. Right. Let me ask you about West Coast hip hop. Mm-hmm. Since I've been here, West Coast hip hop has been through a lot of different eras. Mm-hmm. When I first got to LA, it was 2006. We were still very much in, when I first started hearing it, the like lingering old death row era, like kind of still that type of sound was yeah. still boom hitting it. Funk, funk, kind of used the the G funks was it was just doing doing and out. And then end of the decade, early next decade, you had a real party popping. Let's go to a function, L.A. type era, where I, I people always I tell people all the time that was the best time to go out in L.A. when all them records were coming at the same time. Mustard Muster was coming. You know, all of that stuff was popping. You were there. Yeah. League of Stars was there. Everybody was doing the whole nine. Now, it's interesting. I'm not as tapped in with the hip-hop as I used to be, but it doesn't seem as if there is a unified L.A. music culture like there used to be. Right. It seems like, you know, uh, rest in peace to Draco, when he was here, he inspired a lot of people to have a specific flow. Yeah. It seemed like... Uh, topping them over there, doing the artsy, more elevated, highbrow sort of thing, global, thing, global, global type of deal. But it it does it doesn't seem like there's a a consistent wavelength for the LA sound or LA music now. Um, and of course, we lost Nip. Yeah. What do you think is going on with LA hip hop? It's so fragmented right now. It doesn't seem as if there is a real movement. Am I missing something? Um, I think you are hitting it on the head. I think when you say that 07, 08, that's when Dr. Dre was still the go-to. And then you say Mustard, he was the go-to. We had a we had like a significant producer that you go to to get that sound that dictated what we sound like. Right now, that's just not it. I think everybody else is like trying to mimic somebody else's sound, somebody else's region sound. Because if you do do a sound that is too West Coast, you're labeled regional. Those records don't really cross over past Vegas, and it's tough. But then if an artist... Let's say a Roddy Rich does a more Southern style stuff, it crosses over. Yeah. So why, if you're a young MC looking to get on, why would you try to dabble in creating some new West Coast sound when you're watching people from here that actually monetize? Like the Doja Cats, the Tyler, the Creators, the Kendrick, the Lamars, the Roddy Riches, um, they go. Like, yeah. why would you try to stick with the sound? I get it. It's, it's more so like math and science. But... I think it's about somebody actually taking time to to reinvent what we did before. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think with the funk, when funk came, then we came with the quote unquote ratchet drum. And then, then now it just was like, all right, the South kind of took over. 
Yeah. So it forced you to have to get in that rhythm. And now Chicago and now the New York drill thing is happening. So you're seeing a lot of people hop on that. I don't think it's just our time yet. So while everybody's doing what they're doing, this when some young producer needs to be sitting in there trying to cook up what this new West Coast thing sounds like. I think Hit Boy is doing a great job, great of, job. of establishing. Yeah. Like he can take other genres music and you still feel like you're listening to somebody from California. Right. I think he's the go-to now if uh, uh, out of everybody. Um, but we just don't have that that one locked in guy, that one locked in team of producers that can really take it to the next level. Sonically, bro, like it's tough, bro. Like really think about it. I'm probably uh, you, you from California. I'm no? from Louisiana. Right. That was so. Nobody from uh, nobody that lives here is from, from here. here. <laughs> so how the fuck do you make music <laughs> That's for a whole town true. of people that are not from that town? Yeah. You you're like kind of stuck in this bubble, like where shit. You gotta either try to sound like somebody else to get out, then try it, mm -hmm. or you gotta try to force it and gotta have a lot of money behind you to really force that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, I think it can be fixed. I just I don't see anybody right now really taking the time to do it because again, it's oversaturated. And if they are doing it, you gotta comb through so many people to see it. Mm. You know. We were talking off mic before we got on this podcast. You said that you're not PC. Mm -mm. Not at all. Big movie came out this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Barbie. Right. You took to Instagram Live to talk about your contributions. Right. Because you don't like the term spooky writer and stuff like right, that. Right, 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 right. I'm wondering, you talked about the song that you had worked on right. with Sweetie. Yes. Uh, Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice did some version of that song. Right. You took to Instagram to talk about your frustrations, how you felt yeah. about that. Have you heard from Nikki and her team since then? Has anybody reached out to you? Well, you know what's interesting about that? Nikki screamed at everybody except me that week. <laughs> mm. I should kind of tell y'all something. What I don't do, I don't like things that aren't fair. Mm. I've gotten death threats in my, my fucking DMs over this shit, all that. Of course, it's funny to me. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing to me. Yeah. But what I'm saying it to say is like, wow, this can really get really loud really quick when they want it to get loud. I've said all type of outrageous shit and nobody's never went viral. <laughs> but when I say that, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. The barbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cap. The, 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 point, the barbs are gonna get mad if you talk about Nikki. Oh, I, but I wasn't, that's the thing. I wasn't talking about Nikki. I was talking about the situation. See, I'm in this thing where... Tell me what happened, Jay. Okay, so this was going on. I was in a camp. Well, first of all, let me stop. I was a part of this team that was writing records with Sweetie for her project. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this was one of the records. It was a record where we flipped the Barbie sample. Mm -hmm. And they held the record back because they had this great idea. Oh, the movie's getting ready to come up. Let's send this to Nikki. They can get on it. They can do it together. So it was held up on the release. So, okay. This is, this is my time and my money. Okay. So it gets sent over there. I see this big pitch deck, how they're setting up this thing for it to go. I'm talking about with the Barbie dolls, how it's getting ready to go. She says she's going to do it. Everybody's just waiting. Everybody's just waiting. January comes. Everybody's just waiting. February just comes. Then you start hearing rumblings that she's reproduced the record and is getting ready to put it out with somebody else. I'm like, okay, well, great. Who's going to pay me for my time? Mm. Because me, I request a day rate when I do these things. Now, in that situation, I went into a friend, so I didn't charge what I usually charge. But I usually, before I get there, this is what I charge to come. Meaning for my time. Mm -hmm. Fuck what happens after that. A lot of writers don't get that. They don't even have a budget for writers in these things, which is crazy. Producers get a budget, but there's no writer's budget. Mm -hmm. So this was in the midst of me talking about writers. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, this is why, this reason right here is why you gotta, you have to take a day rate. Just in case something crazy happened, at least your day was paid for. If you don't get any publishing or if somebody hears an idea and now they want to go do it somewhere else. So I saw a tweet and it came past me and I said, yeah, I can confirm that there was a version that Sweetie did that she was supposed to go, she was supposed to get on. And that's all I was saying. I'm like, I don't think it's really fair that it went down like that for Sweetie. Yeah. Me, I can go track down and go get my bag however I need to go do it. Have I let up on it? Publicly, I wasn't even getting loud on it publicly. I was saying one tweet and it went crazy. But I'm definitely gonna figure out what's going on legally because I just think I just saw the record went gold today. Mm. It's about IP for me. If you hear something that I did and then you go make your version of it, you can't do that. I don't care if it's a sample, I don't care about whatever it is. 
You can't just, you can't do that to people. All we have is our IP right now. Mm. That's all I sell is IP. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just say, well, no, nah, I'll just tweak it or I'll just do that. Not on my watch. Now, if everybody else is allowing y'all to do that, so be it. I'm not tripping. I'm not here to blow the whistle. I even told their people this. Y'all ain't got to, I don't care what y'all do with them. I don't. Just make sure I'm okay because I have the documents in my email that all this was sent over to that team. Right. So that's what it really was about. Shout out to everybody, though. I think it's a great song. I like the flip. <laughs> I have no personal issues with anybody. Yeah. But I can't play about my business with these college kids I got and all that shit I got going on. I could care less about if you like what I'm doing. Does that happen often? Sorry. No, go ahead. No, go, Does go ahead. that happen often? Yes. People yes. stealing songs. Yes. People are afraid. People are afraid to get blackballed. People are afraid they won't get the next opportunity. People are afraid of loud, loud audiences. And I'm from Compton, bro. I done made it through a lot. I'm not, <laughs> no bunch of Twitter fingers not finna make me nervous <laughs> about something that I know is right. Now, if I'm wrong, then I'll say, you know what? My apologies. But nobody has been able to tell me I'm wrong yet. Even the lawyers, everybody, they, well, you know, it was a sample with the Barbie and this is, and that. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. And I hear you. But if you go look on ASCAP, ours was registered in January. It's, it's in there, January 18th. All of our names are sitting there. This thing just came out. Well, anybody can do the sample. Why she didn't do it before the ending? Mm. Tell me why. Because from what I heard, she had a horrible relationship with Barbie and the whole brand. So all of a sudden now, you get this great idea. Cap. So you think it's unfair what happened to Sweetie? I, I mean, honestly, I'm not even concerned about Sweetie's opinion on it or anybody else's. This is a Jason Martin issue. <laughs> I'm not even going to involve her in this because right. we, we're not close like that. Mm -hmm. I was there to do a job. Mm -hmm. and that's it. And I don't want them, I don't want no issues with nobody. But compensation is, is will happen in some form or fashion because you're not going to keep doing writers, producers, and creators like this. You're not mm -hmm. going to scare me away with some tweets. Mm -hmm. Who are you voting for in the upcoming election? You know, 2024, you have a lot of people that are, that are, vying for the presidency. You know, you have different people here, Jason. You have Joe Biden, who's the incumbent president. You have Donald Trump seeking the nomination. You have a troublemaker like RFK Jr. You have, on the other side, Ron DeSantis trying to make noise. Tim Scott, are you political? Who are you voting for? Do you vote? Uh, I've, I've, I've voted twice. Okay, when did you vote? I voted when Obama ran, of course. Uh -huh. And then when Kanye ran. And you voted wait, for wait, Kanye. Wait. Yes, wait. I did. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yes, I did. I <laughs> definitely next, did. Let's move on to the next I definitely question. did. Why? Well, I've never seen him lose at anything. You've never seen Kanye lose? I've never. He has not. He's one of the, he's one of the most overachieving human beings on earth. Would what have we, what have we ever seen him lose at for me to say that he couldn't do this? He's taken some he's losses recently. Now. The, okay, give me those type of losses. What kind of losses he take? He, he lost. Looked, he looked like he's fine to me. He lost a wife. He lost an Adidas deal. He got a new wife. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Adidas is, is back up selling them fucking Yeezys right now. I'm not trying to hit on Kanye. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm answering your question. He has Adidas. <laughs> Yeezys are back out. First of all, I, I don't want to make this about Kanye so much, but do you think that a vote for Kanye is a serious vote? What Definitely. If, what if Kanye West would have won? Do you think Kanye would have been a competent president of the United States of America? Yes, I know kids that go to his Donda Academy that are flourishing. Like, I think we get caught up in these things because of what the media says about somebody. How, just show me where he's caught L's at. And then I'll... I'll I think he's caught some L's. I think he's caught some L's. I think... So Donald some Trump says, caught L's, he got to be a president? No, I mean, look... But we're I'm not okay that. with that either. I'm, what I'm saying is this. Actually, that was one of the most... Financially stable signs for black people you love in a that. long time. You love the Trump presidency. I don't love, <laughs> I don't, I don't love any of those niggas because those niggas don't fuck with nothing <laughs> I got going us, on. Yeah. But if I could get close to somebody that I know thinks I level art, and I'm like, well, let's see what he do. I the thing is, all these people are puppets anyway. They're mm. getting that shit handed down to them. Like we watching Biden fall over to sleep. They're basically pepping him with drugs. All right, go greet the goddamn teleprompter. It looks crazy. Do you, like let me ask you this. You voted for Kanye. Yes. Can you give me any of the policies that Kanye was advocating for? Is that something important? No. To you? 
I'm going strictly off of I've seen him win <laughs> his whole career. Wait. So why did so the why first is that time not you the, voted, the, the resume is great. The first time you for you're music, voting for, for music, for music. No, for fashion, <laughs> for life, <laughs> for schools, for finance, for interviews, for impact, for I mean, he doesn't have a lot of L. Okay, I feel like I know the answer to this. So the first time you ever voted was for Obama. Yes. The first time. Yeah, that's when all a lot of black people was first time. And that's why? True. You know what? what? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so we're like, do you think it's important though? You're from Compton. Compton is a rich history. We're gonna talk more about Compton yeah. later on. But Jason Martin, mm -hmm. a guy who a lot of people look up to. Yeah. You got kids. Yes. Do you think it's important for people to be more politically aware? Like, do you think it you are setting a poor example if you say that you voted for somebody and you don't really know what their policies are? Um, no. I don't think I'm setting a poor example because white people do it all the time. White people do it all the time. Yeah, they don't know fucking everything that's going on. I'm not saying, but forget about for. white people. What about our people? What do we need to do? We need to go with our gut. Do what we feel is right. Mm. We shouldn't be always going off of what everybody else's version of right is. My version of right isn't the, the politics. The thing is, the politics have never worked in black people's favor anyway. Mm. So why in the fuck do I care so much about that? Mm. What would you feel like? What do you feel like does work for black people? Uh, I think, uh, uh, shit, that, that answer is, that's going to take a minute. <laughs> to be, to be real. To, I think, because we got a lot of internal shit we got to work on. We got to, sure. we got to start just, I just saying hello and bye to each other, please and thank you. Opening mm. doors, being nice to each other, not, not looking at each other as an enemy or somebody that's trying to take something from. We have some, a lot of internal shit that got to happen. Then that leads to monetization. Then that leads to creating infrastructure, then that leads to a whole lot of different things. I don't think that whoever's the president is going to fix what we need to fix. I agree. But do you think being a disenfranchised voter is the answer? Not caring at all and doing nothing, not voting I don't, is the I answer? I don't think it's the answer for somebody else. I think for me, it's definitely the answer. Because the thing <laughs> is, at least you're going to get some participation from me. Because to me, I don't see anything in that building that's for my people. I don't see it. it, it and it hasn't happened or shown yet. You get what I'm saying? So, and how long has this president been going on? This thing has been a hundred, few hundred years, right? 1776. Right. Right now, Asian people don't get reparations before my people. Mm. Right now, the there's a whole sex thing that gets treated better than my people. There's a whole lot of things that come first before my people because of that building. Man, I don't give a fuck who they pick. So, this is, it's interesting to me because... I think sometimes on this particular podcast, mm -hmm. what we don't hear enough of is the sentiment that you're uh, expressing right now. I don't think we hear enough of that because when we... Because you're we, not alone. Is we, what we talk That's to me. a lot of very politically motivated people. Yeah. And our audience is very politically motivated. Yeah. People who are pouring over this stuff and are really engaged in it. And a lot of people that I talk to I sometimes try to express on the podcast that they feel a lot of apathy either way. And there's not a lot that they can see in their communities. I think it's interesting what you just said that in terms of results from voting or not voting. I think it's interesting what you just said because you answered the question. When I said, what do you think black people need? You said all of these things as far as togetherness. That's solidarity. Right. I think you, you, I think that's something that's really important for black yeah. people, right? Solidarity, a togetherness, an understanding of shared values. Yeah. And I think that's the first thing that we actually do need. I do, though, think that maybe not on a national level, but on a state and local level, we need to pay more attention, and I'll tell you why. The reason why I would say that is because there are so many people who are elected for different positions, state, statewide and locally, that make lo decisions that directly affect somebody's life. Right. That judge that's going to hand out that sentence right. to one of your, your cousins or your homies. The DA and how they're going to prosecute things and who they're beholden to. The sheriff. Right. All of these things are elected positions. And so I do want to make sure that black people know that beyond president, beyond senators, right? It's important to be involved in those things civically because those outcomes will matter. Like, they put Trump in office in 2016. You were talking about, like, how, how things were financially for black people. Well, the Trump then appointed Supreme Court justices 
that rolled back a lot of freedoms for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Took affirmative action out of schools. Mm -hmm. They um, abortion, uh, uh, abortion, yeah, all types of situations like that. So those elections do have consequences. Yeah, I mean, you know, what's crazy? My guy Runch, shout out to Runch um, out of Watts. He literally was just talking, man. We need to go take some kids and put them in politics. We got to take kids and put them in politics so they can learn. Our generation is fried. We got so he literally just said this to me. Mm. This is a guy that went from the streets to really becoming some like a, a, like his voice means something around Los Angeles and in, in this business. So you are making a lot of sense. I think for me. I would love to dive in into I would love to Jason learn more. Jason Martin, Mayor Compton. I don't know about that. Mayor Compton. Listen, First they don't, of all, I love the mayor right now. Listen, I love the mayor good. right now. Listen, the mayor right now they have is great. Let me Jason tell you why. Let me mayor tell you Compton, why I couldn't bro. do it. They don't even have, they won't even fucking let us put dispensaries over there. Now, let me tell you why that's important. <laughs> You're laughing. You're laughing, <laughs> no, I just right? I'm not laughing. That's what you were going to say. Hear. Tell us why the dispensaries Wait, are, are so important in Compton. Come on. Come on. Coffee and Kush. Come on now. Listen, cannabis, peace, I'm telling you, these things go hand in hand, bro. Any place that has a large consumption area from the valley. Y'all, you, you live in the valley? I, I live, live in out the valley. Here, but I've lived in the valley before. Where you live in the valley? What area? North Hollywood. Got it. How many dispensaries are there? A this bunch. one right around the corner. Exactly. Yeah. It's safe. Yeah. Doesn't it feel so safe here? You know why? <laughs> you know why? Because people don't got time for all that bullshit when you smoke that weed. <laughs> and what else do they have out there? Farmers markets. Mm -hmm. Things like that, right? Sure. Place to grow. Compton, no, you go ahead and try to grow something in that farm. They come and wipe that shit down. Mm. It's like it's a it's a mentality over there that has to be fixed. It starts with the art, it starts with the spirit. Mm. Like I can't even go grow trees up down Central Avenue without getting fined or a ticket or somebody coming to pull them off. They won't. I, I'm starting there. I'm starting straight positive. Like right now, I talked to, um, they got the Compton Museum that, that be the first museum in Compton of, of art. I'm like, listen, every bag of Compton coffee that I sell, we're going to donate a certain amount to that place because now we're talking. I want to do a Compton Walk of Fame. I want to start celebrating this mm. place more so than fucking try to sweep it out and do gang injunctions and, and all of this. Nah, man, because honestly, a lot of us that we, a lot of us from there, we love that place. Mm. We have to leave because there ain't shit there we can do. Mm. We can't shop there. We can't eat right there. We can't get the fly clothes there. We can't even get our weed there. We can get some drink, though. We can get some guns, for sure. Mm -hmm. We get all these I other gotta things. I got to tell you, Jason. It's crazy. It sounds like a mayor to me. The dude has a do fucking you, platform. Do you hear? Like, the dude has a platform. Listen, listen, Jason, go have, let me have a shot when man. I walk out of here. Yo, <laughs> I'm tell you something me. right let now, bro. We, we, got, we took Jason from being politically apathetic <laughs> to the mayor of Compton. It took 15 minutes. See what happens when you vote for Kanye? Like, like, they start nah, looking at you like you, they start nah, looking nah, at you like you can do nah, anything. Fuck all that. Fuck all okay. that. You that vote. Hey, before you vote next time, me and you gonna do a whole thing. We gonna talk about this. And Kanye was running with the Hispanic dude. You see how they was? Oh, uh, y'all don't do. His we, running mate? His was? running mate was, a, was he was his? running for vice president. Yeah. Uh, his was... running mate was a uh, Hispanic guy. I forget his name. Are you talking about Nick Fuentes? Please I don't. don't. No, 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 please don't. Don't. Sure. don't. Not talking about Come back. Listen, back. Listen, I, I can't be. I'm going with my. I don't care. I don't care what it is. No, you're not talking we can, about we can, we can fix them in the inside. <laughs> right, right, right. Not we'll, him. We'll, we'll talk. Uh, <laughs> I want to I talk about Compton real quick, bro. <laughs> talk about growing up in a place that is both as famous a city and as notorious of a city that we have in America. What was your upbringing like that uh, out there like? Man, I, I will say this. I didn't know that it was bad until I left. So I had a great time. I, I But my version of normal isn't everybody's version of normal. It was normal for us to lose friends to gun violence. It was normal for some of our best friends to be gang members, drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Like, this was a normal thing. But when I say I had a blast, I'm talking about, like, the, the football games, the free lunches, the camaraderie that, that went on in my neighborhood— it made me who I am today. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, mm. And to know that the goal was to get out of there made us work a lot harder than everybody. That's why it's so many amazing people that it's came crazy. out of yeah. that city. That's why the Compton, the Compton Walk of Fame for me, I saw Dre get his his hall of, his his star, and I was like, damn, why couldn't he put that on Rosecrans? Why couldn't we put DeMar and, and Quick and... And fucking Kendrick and, and fucking damn Marcellus Wilde. It's so many people. Kevin Costner. It's so many people that came from out of this place. Damn, you fucking up. You fucking up right now. I'm just saying. I got a game for you. Talk to me. The game is called Compton or Not. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna name somebody, then you gotta tell me you, whether or not they you from just Compton. You threw me off with the last one you named. Was yeah, that on your he's, list? He's from Linwood. That's inside of Compton. Was that on your list? Of course it is. I didn't know that, <laughs> that so Jason sick. was going to know that Come one. on, man. Look at it. Come on, man. Wait, I feel on. like Jason going to go, go. <laughs> I got five people. <laughs> and I'm going to give you a name. And you got to tell me whether or not this person is for Compton or not. Compton got so many famous people that it's, it's hard to tell who, who's actually from Compton. Are right. you ready for this game? Let's rock out. All right. Ice Cube. Not from Compton. Not from Compton. No. Very, very, very widely held misconception that Ice Cube is from Compton. Yeah, he out the hundreds. He's L.A. Yeah, Ice Cube is from L.A. He is, of course, part of N.W.A. Very important piece to Compton, to Compton, for sure. To Compton, but not from Compton. Without him, I don't know if N.W.A. goes that big. So he's honorary Compton. Honorary Compton. For sure. Honorary Compton. Yes. He can get a star? I got to talk to the powers that Okay, be. okay. So you can't, so <laughs> if you do the Compton Walk of Fame, does Ice Cube get a star? In my book, yes, but I still... Have to talk to the top. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. okay. Kevin Costner. It's from Compton. That's... I gave you guys that one. Right? I mean, I, know, <laughs> I, have, I have it on the list. No I have idea. it on the list. This is, that's one of my favorite facts right there. Matter of fact, like the TMZ walk? walked up on me. And asked, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me. Was yeah. Was yeah. Yeah. I think, like, yeah. I, that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Like, one of my favorite little known facts. Yeah. Mayor Karen Bass. No. Ding, ding, not from Compton. Okay? This next one is so easy. Anthony Anderson. For sure. It's definitely from Compton. Definitely. Anthony I'm Anderson. like 0 for 4. Keep going. Imagine <laughs> Anthony Anderson getting his star right. Oh, this is, see, it's making my head hurt again. Last one. George W. Bush. Yes. No. Yeah. How? Brother, he, he had, they had these apartments. They had these, like, the project-looking apartments, man, that, that's right over there off of Santa Fe. And everybody says, like, you know, George Bush used to live over there. George Man. W. Bush, George Bush, oh. his dad, yeah. their that was entire a predominantly family, white area. they lived in Compton. Yeah. They lived, they were residents of mm -hmm. Compton. For years. George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, they're like, they were residents of Compton. Stars? I got this. Huh? Hmm? Well, we, I gotta talk, I gotta talk <laughs> to George the Bush, <laughs> Does George <laughs> W. Bush get a star in the Compton Walk Fest? It's the president. You know what? It's the president. If they allow me to do the Walk of Fame? Yeah. Because it's going to take, it. take some white nigga to let me do it first. So <laughs> we'll give y'all one to make it happen. For sure. So for you, sure. Bro, yeah, yeah. Bro, we'll you, uh, to speaking of Compton Walk of Fame, you, you got put, you went five for five in Compton or not. Yeah, yeah. you know you're Compton or not, five for five. I got to ask you something. So you're, you're married? Yes. Shout out to Tyler, shout out to you, Daphne Wayans. Well, that's not her name no more, but yeah. Daphne Martin. Yeah. Daphne Martin. <laughs> <laughs> um... There's an age gap. Yeah. How far apart are you guys? Um, out of respect for her, that's not for me to say. Okay. But I, it's not what everybody thinks. Let me ask you this. You, Jason Martin, mm -hmm. have dated a lot of women, I'm assuming, around L.A. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. <laughs> but you met a beautiful, and this is a beautiful, talented, amazing woman. A beautiful, talented, amazing woman that was a little older than you, mm -hmm. and y'all got married. Yeah. Was there something different about the older lady that right, you, so you don't with? say that. See, so what you got to you tell them, teach them how to word. That. How do you work? How do I work? How do I work? say older. Okay. Yeah. Is there something different about her? I, I, I call her a veteran. Veteran. <laughs> I don't know if She's, veterans better. Was there something different <laughs> between and when we say this, we're not talking about like sure. yeah, yeah. So when we, was there something different? I'm interested in knowing that she had because there was she was maybe a little bit more experienced in life and a little bit more established uh -huh. that separated her from some of the other women that you. I, I think uh, for sure, but I think it's more so the history of us. A lot of people don't know that we've been knowing each other since I was two. She was nine. Oh. Um, yeah, like my grandmother, my grandmother and her mother still live a house apart. Oh wow! So, wow, I did not know this at all. So yeah, this, so this I, is a relationship that goes all the way back. Long, uh -huh. like since I, I I was born in Germany, so I came back like a year and a half or two years old. So that block I came back to. Yeah, she's been living down the street. 
I've been back and forth for her house. My mom, her mom, my, my her mom, her dad come down to my house. I would go down there constantly. I used to tell her like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna marry you, all that type of stuff. When I was just like a little oh, ass kid. Bro, <laughs> so it's a little deeper than everybody thinks. I it, it was, and I don't like to say nothing about this because I actually like to hear what people think. I've been told all type of things of why I did what I did. So it's it's so funny just to see what people think. But nah, I've, I would have known her if we didn't do this. I've been mm. knowing her forever. You know so a lot of people are assuming stuff. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, you will. She got a bag or you needed this or boom, boom, or she needed a young nigga. Or, da, da, da. I've heard it all. <laughs> and we just laugh. You know what I'm saying? Because I've probably seen her mother more than she's seen her mother in the last 50, mm. 40, 40 years. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So just a little different than people think. So was it was it weird to watch people make all those assumptions about the relationship? Hell no. The boss of hot headlines and all of that I stuff. I know. It was funny. Because <laughs> you know the truth. I, dude, I know the truth about so much shit that hits yeah. the headlines and be like, look at this. That's funny. That's cap. My, I'm more so like, nobody ever asked, though. Mm. So that tells me everything. The consumer. <laughs> nobody You're ever right. asked. But yeah, it's a little deeper than like, I needed a woman. This is and that. It was... This has been happening since shit. I was two, three, four, five. Love you talk about filmmaking. I want to see the story play out. A lot of people want to see the story, man. Yeah. You know, I like to keep my stuff on the wrap because you know I, I'm really low key about that situation. It's just my situation. You'll notice I don't even post my children or anything like that. I like mm -hmm. to keep that here because I'm not selling that. If that makes any sense, but nah, hell nah. Yeah, yeah. That's this a little different. Hmm. It's a little different, bro. That as that's very. How can I put it, bro? That's beautiful mm -hmm. to hear yeah. about that like, kind of yeah. lifelong connection yeah. that you have. And that's probably why you're able to laugh because... Oh, it's funny. You're thinking that people not even scratching the surface of what y'all relationship really it's is. It's hilarious to see. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. We laugh a lot about it. Because she'd be like, you should just say something. I'm like, then I won't be able to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what do they're not, they're not, like not going to say strategy. the dumb shit. Like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> like we, we lose, we, I lose all the jokes. Like, I get to, I get to, like, really see everybody around me and just see what everybody kind of thinks. I've had real close friends and be like, ooh, yeah, nigga, you hit the lick. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you, like, what are you talking about? Like, what, what lick are you, what are we talking about? Right. Oh, no, I mean, you, no, no, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't know. I'll explain. What do you, talk to me. Right. <laughs> I won't understand because shit. I should not. For what I know, I got to pay for everything around that motherfucker. So, <laughs> see? I don't know what lick don't I hit. Start, fan, see? don't start. We're not doing a sexy thing. Because a We're man, he knows it's something expected of him. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk wait, about. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa! I need to dial in here. What? What was? Come on, tell we just Come no. On, we now. just did. We just did a whole summit of the sexist. We talked about black traditional men roles. To black women. Yes, traditional roles versus but modern roles. We didn't really get into. Like, did Modern we, and traditional. Tell, I want to. I just. Well, we didn't really even get into that. But what wh what was your take? The man should pay for everything. No, or should it be fifty fifty? So it's not. It's not about being fifty fifty. Let me tell you what my dad told me, Jason. I've told you guys this on the podcast before. My dad was to rest in peace with my dad. He was talking to me about I was taking a little girl out. Right. He goes, "You got any money?" And I was like, "I only have the money that you're about to give me. That's the only money that I have." And he's like, "All right, this is what I'm gonna do." I'm give you a hundred dollars. I was like, God damn. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, what, 15? Okay. I was like, God damn. I was like, I, I was about to tell him, what I wanted to say is it's not gonna be a hundred dollars. <laughs> right. I can tell you. But something. you wanna get that Honda. Yeah, you yeah, get I that wanted to get that Honda. It's like, I would, but he's like, the reason why is when the bill comes for whatever you're doing, or when it's time to pay, I don't want you to have to look at the bill. I want to, I want you to know that you got it covered. Right. So just take the $100 bill, put it down there, don't even look at it, maintain eye contact with her. Right. Go to a little pizza parlor, they come back, they give you the thing, you go up there and you pay at the counter, whatever. You pay for it. That way, she knows... Oh, he understands. ...that she's secure. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at it like, damn, did we get extra pepperoni? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Man. You're not looking like, oh my God, I can't believe you got an extra Coke. You let her know it's no sweat. You can take her out. And he goes, if you can't afford to take a woman out, then you should you not take right. one out. Come on. And so this is when I'm, when I'm saying you I'm like it. it. <laughs> you like it. See? My dad was an old school player. Come and so on. what I'm saying is 
whatever people might think is going on in a relationship, as men, right. we feel the need to make women feel secure. I'm not going to speak for you, but yeah. the reason why you're probably paying for a lot of stuff is because that's what you do for your woman, right? Well, would you have a problem if she, if she helped out, if she paid for things too? Uh, would I have a pro Okay. <laughs> would I have a problem? Yes. Because because that just sways things the wrong kind of way. So the dynamic would I want her to have her own money? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Mm. Okay. Cause I don't want I don't want her depending on if she wants to do something and I'm not there. I, or I want you to have I want this for your own self. I want you to generate your own bank account for your body, for your heart, for your mind, so you can feel away. Not because we need it. Mm. Okay, but what if she wants to help out? What if the situation is reversed where she might have to provide? Do you have a problem with that? I would internally, me. Personally, me. Just okay, okay, Jason, fair, me. fair. Right. Do I have a problem with that for everybody else? It depends on how you start. If y'all started going Good half, if that's y'all spot and that's how y'all get down, go for it. You get what I'm saying? That ain't how I started. That's not how I wanted to go. Now, if, now, I will say this, like, if some shit, like, just happens out of nowhere, like, oh, man, man I, this car was here. I saw it for you. I grabbed it. Oh, that's fly. Do I need you to do it? No. But if you, you drive just, the car. If you... Fuck, fuck yeah. yeah. I'm driving, I'm driving the car. That's a gift. I'm driving the car. That's a gift because she so, went somewhere and hustled up her money and was like, you know what? I want to get this man something. That's fly. Yeah. Not, oh shit, he don't got a car. Let me go get him one. Uh, see, that's actually... That's, hold on. Hold on. Let me tell you why he's spitting. Let's tell why he's spitting right there. Because there is a much different dynamic I understand To that. buying somebody a car because they can't buy themselves a car and buying right. somebody a car. You know how... You know what how I was stunt on motherfuckers if Kalika bought me a card? Like, hey, my girl bought this. Look at this. Come on. Sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know what I'm saying? I get how it would make you feel internally, right? Like, right. I get there are gender roles, whether you want to deny them or not. I get how it would make you feel a certain way if you needed a car and your woman bought you a car. Okay, I get that. But what if she just wants to do for you because she can and you're not there now, but you might eventually get there. She's trying to help you I, out. I think, I, again, I think that is a great thing for somebody not named Jason. So you would just walk? Fuck yeah. I have just walked. <laughs> I have just walked. I've No, I, they don't go like that because the minute, and nothing against black women, oh, the God. minute y'all got us, <laughs> say it, Jason. Oh, y'all ain't gonna let us go. Yet. That's called mad day. The minute, that's called mad day. 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 The second, the second, y'all. The second, you're not in love. You can come to the next summit of the second. The second, you're not in love. How many times people gonna have to tell y'all? This nigga gonna drive off in the car. I gave him. Look, I bought you that motherfucker. Can I just honestly say because that is our stereotype? I try my hardest to never do that. I never throw it in the face of my significant other because I know that that exists and I never want anybody to feel less than. I mm. never do that. Okay, not to I'm his face, but you aware. ain't never, after you got rid of the nigga, you called his homegirl, I got this nigga the car, the clothes. Now he want to get, he want to get Jason, big. Jason, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking thank you. But these, but like, let's say this though, because we, because I know people, you know, it, but these are the little things. We love each other. Jason. They're not little to me. I mean, they're little <laughs> in the grand scheme of love. And no, somebody you're gonna be they're with. They're huge. They're huge. But these are the things that, you know, we accept and make spaces for one another. You know, Jason being with, um, loving his. So you was loving her when you couldn't even have her, when you was like, you was like, damn, your whole life you was pining for. I told her, I told her, I said, yeah, it's, it's up. I'm mm. married. It was going down. But then the, then the other nigga came and got her off the block. <laughs> I remember when he came and got her. I was like, <laughs> Oh, wait. Why is the living color nigga over here on the block? <laughs> why is he here? So he saw I couldn't, so I, I couldn't understand her, why he was there. For those like, who don't know, her first husband was Kenny Ivory Wayans of Living Color fame. And you when you saw him come around, you was like, did you feel like that was in the middle? You felt like the story was over then. I just I just could never understand. Like, why is he over here? Like, why is he here? Why? 
Then okay, why is he keep? Why is the truck filling up all her? Sh- What's happening? <laughs> What's going on? And then I didn't see her again. I think she was gone. She was gone forever. I didn't see her. I, Did I you pray on his downfall? Nah, <laughs> oh, I'm I, asking. I, I, I definitely watched the the films a little different. <laughs> But as I got older, it was like, oh, that, I mean, you know, I was a kid. I was a child when that right. happened. I'm 10, 19 years old. So I'm like, I just kept I was wondering, like, why is he? I remember telling her dad, like, y'all gonna just let her, let him take her? <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. So, nah, I mean, we, you know, we had a long gap where we didn't talk or that just wasn't in my mindset. Then we just kind of bumped into each other. It's right meant to be, it's meant so, to be. Yeah. Um, I got one last request. It's not really even a... And thank you, Kylie, for being... And look, you guys, I, you 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 have got to go listen to this music. Um, you have got to go listen to this music, stream this music, tell them, tell them the name of the album. I Owe Myself. I, I Owe myself. myself. Yes. I Love Fuck You Pay Me. That, that's Come my on. favorite Come on. That joint is hard. I Love 1200. Come on, man. Like, Fuck You Pay Me is hard as mm-hmm. shit. Thank you. Um, 1200 is hard. Weekend Dad is hard. It's a... It's a... You, if I have one criticism, you know what it is? Give it to me. I... More. <laughs> I wanted more. Well, I, I was just it. starting to groove. <laughs> right. like, I like the whole, like the whole thing. I'm in the hammock. That's how you know this shit is bang. I'm in the hammock listening to this shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just and it's and it, it, it's it's awesome, but it's a it's short. Yeah. Well, you know when they don't let you put a price tag on your art, you gotta kind of give it away. They right, 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 give it right, away. Right, 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 like, I'm already giving the shit away for uh, what? Is, what do I get a stream from here? Point ten. Cents? What is it? Point ten cents? Spotify mm. give me. So it's a little tough yeah. for me to upload twenty goddamn songs. Mm. Going like, hold on, I gotta space this thing out a little bit. I do have a deluxe dropping. So. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Yes, can't yes, wait to listen. Yes, to yes, this. yes, yes. Um, Jason Aldean. I don't know if you know who that is. I just, I was just listening to the song, uh, "Small Town," right? Yeah. yeah. Good fucking song. Try that in a small town. Sorry, I what? fuck with that song. That song hard. Problem. You're you going back to problem now. What? You're going back to problem. He's saying some real shit. Like, don't try that shit over here. It's it's a racist pro lynching song, Jason. I listen. He didn't say anything about lynching. It's the anybody. video. I it's the video, video. In Is he lynching somebody in the video? He's standing in front of a courthouse where they used to lynch black people for years. Wow. So you don't have a problem with the song? I just heard the song. I was like, oh, yeah, these white niggas tripping. They ready to get outside. I fucks with it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but like but, people, so people, go ahead, Rachel. Well, no, I was just going to say, but now that you know that. Let me watch it, the video and then come out. Come, but come you have to my... know that that's what Columbia, Tennessee, 50 miles south of Nashville, they used to lynch black people. There's a, there's a history of it. Black men specifically throw their bodies over the courthouse and hang yeah, them. Instead, I, he's got a flag hanging there. I, I, you know what, you... This is gonna sound crazy, but let me let me let me get it all the way out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I appreciate loud racism more than hidden. Oh, that's oh sound yes, crazy. yes, sure, that sure. Sound crazy. So I get to understand. Oh, that's what y'all on. I fuck with that. Okay, that's because because now you're you're very direct about the mission, right? You can recognize. And then I mean, what's the difference? Between that song and fuck them other niggas and I'm down with my niggas. We all have these records where it's fuck y'all. So, we hey, on this. Hey, this is my thing though. Talk to me. This is where. Jason Martin has an opportunity. Come on. We don't have very many records that are fuck them. We have a lot of records that are fuck other black people. What I'm saying right now is, think about it, bro. Jump on this wave, bro. Fuck Try That in a Small Town. You should make Try That in Compton. Try That in Compton. Well, you know they tried that in Compton. And somebody got their head cracked. You remember when the Ku Klux? You, remember, you didn't hear about that? Yeah, I do know. Yeah, the Ku Klux Klan tried to walk over there. Not to come off to the. It didn't last too long. Right, so bro, okay, I'm telling you, right? so, they, so we already know do they the won't video, try that in, in my in small town, bro. Do that, in, do the, the do videos right. in that spot. Do that, listen, bro. Come Them back, motherfuckers bro. will never come to LA with that shit. I'm that's gonna tell a, you that right that's now. How the song starts they, off. They, they know, but they trust me. They've known better for a hey, long time. Hey, Jason, you gotta get in on this, bro. Well, I'm here. Yeah, bro, Say, bro, like, bro, you gotta get in on this. I would love to remix it. That's it's, right there. Give me the instrument. Give me the instrument right the number now. Number one streaming song right now. This Just is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for you. Also, he wasn't being loud because you didn't know that listening to the song. You got to know the history of where he's standing to put it all together. Bro. You go be loud. I mean, did you? I mean, do you guys honestly think they were just gonna just keep sitting back and just like somebody's gonna somebody's gonna get ballsy or something? They've point. never sat back. They've always right. been a pretty. You know, it's a lot of it's yeah, pro blackness going on. It's 
It's pro LBGQ. It's pro Hispanic. It's pro. Everybody's pro their race. And 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 I'm not here to fucking tell nobody to start something. But if somebody says they're pro white, we just be like, wait, you racist motherfucker. It's kind of a weird thing right no now. Reason you get to be what I'm saying? Though. No reason to be pro. Not for me. I'm not. Yeah. But for, for somebody white, I think it's a reason for them. What's the reason to be pro white if you're white? I think right now they're scared they racist is dying off with the with the with the mixed babies and shit like that. It's it's a, it's a terrible thing going <laughs> Jason, on. Jason, that's right not now. a real thing, bro. It's definitely a real thing. It's not a real thing for them to be afraid of losing power. They are afraid of losing their so, race. So I'm not saying hold that's on. A I'm, very not, real I'm not saying that they're I'm not saying I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they're not I'm not saying that they're not afraid, but I'm saying that to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have to say, hey, pro white and all of that stuff because they're so dominant in the world. It's, it's almost like being pro man. I don't. I want to. I want to re-see that number. See what I, number? What? That that this this population thing. But look at the number. It ain't. It, all, it ain't kind of what it was. Like, no, they, but look oh, at no. the people who have the power. Look at the what the oh, people totally. who look like who have the power. Oh yeah, totally. And when we talk about being. Voting and stuff. Right. If who cares if we're the biggest population? If, if Kanye Kanye was in vote, there, he would have got oh fired. God, all them motherfuckers. He was with Call nothing but Kush. white people. He's just with white people. He got the right ones. Though. He, got, shut he got the, the fuck white. Up. He got the white. white niggas. Tell him about the podcast. You you aren't talking about that kind of stuff on your podcast. Are you talking about your new podcast? Oh yeah, man. I'm coming on. I'm coming on Jason Martin podcast. Please come to Coffee because, Talk, man. Because, because, I'm coming on Coffee Talk because before you're mayor of Compton, before you knew, <laughs> yeah, we, might need, to, we Compton, might need to take that back. We need to, <laughs> take we need to, we need to make that. sure Chase is Watch when I have Kanye and Compton standing next to me. <laughs> yes, I had to get him this Walk of Fame because I saw it and I think he needs to do it. That's the type of shit he should be doing. <laughs> him and, yeah, and the Bushes. They're all pulling that. Everybody going to pull. Boy, that would be so crazy to see. Come on. if you Because if you George invite George w. George w. Bush to the Walk of Fame, he can't not come. He can't not come. He will. He got to come to the walk of fame. He will come. It'll be him, Kev. I'm Kevin telling you, it's, it's going there. It's <laughs> going Kev. I think it's Kev now. <laughs> Santana block K. You can't put the K after this. Oh, after, come on. You can't man. put the K after, after this. You can't put block. the K after. Don't That's do that. right. Shout you out can't. to my, my channel, bro. Shout, shout out to Bosco and the rest of the people over there. Shout out to Bosco from Eagle. There's a different Bosco. Come on. Put me on the show. Different Bosco. Y'all don't know Bosco. Bosco, so Bosco from from over, I don't know if he if he got put on with them, but bro, this is a crazy story. Guy out of Compton, bro. He had, look it up, he made a, they made a movie about him. Crazy story. He escaped from like 14 different jails. You know, you know I what I'm talking about? I heard about, about yeah. this. They, they, they just shot this film, right? They, they, they made the movie about it. They like Tory Lanez or something in it. Tory Lanez oh, is in the movie. That's no. what, it was before. It was okay, before. It was okay. Before. Tory Lanez is <laughs> Tory Lanez. <laughs> we could keep going. We could keep going. Uh, you know not, where I stand. Like, on uh, that. Tory Lanez is in the movie. Uh, 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 what's his name? The guy who played the Punisher, Thomas Jane, is in the movie. Mm -hmm. A lot of great people. Bosco, man, my man Bosco. He did the documentary from over there. I, I don't know if he is. I, somebody sent me a clip he of that. Is. Yeah, he's from that area. I don't know. I can't say that he that 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 he's from there. But she is, that she is shaking when I said that. Nah, <laughs> nah we're not even gonna talk about Tory Lanez. She said a lot. We don't know what you're gonna say. I didn't. Oh, we, we don't know what I'm gonna say. We don't know what you're gonna, you gonna say. No, we really we don't. don't. Tell them about you the podcast. Said, we don't know what you're gonna ever say. Ever since Kanye, we can't predict. <laughs> like, we don't know what you're gonna say. We don't know what you're gonna say. Well, Coffee Talk, right now, we we just dropped the first episode today. It's on my YouTube page, Jason Martin Dot. Please just go on there. It's really during the pandemic. I was bored, so I would go on my balcony and I would smoke and drink coffee and get on live. And I would just talk shit for as long as I'm smoking and drinking mm -hmm. coffee, right? So I just started, a lot of people would just be on there talking. I was just talking about the day. So for about two, three years, like, you should do a show. 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 And I'm like, no, I got too much <laughs> going on. It's tough, da, da, da. But then like in the last month, my team got with me. They said, listen, we got something set up where you can just walk in. The weed's there, the coffee's there, and you just start. Mm -hmm. We edit it on the spot. We even go, we don't, oh, you don't even have to post. You just do the show. And I said, well, shit, let's rock out. So I did the first one Friday, and I, I ain't gonna lie, I had a fucking ball, and it went up today. So shout out to Coffee. Yeah, so episode one went up today. Thank For you. the right. wildest takes. Wildest takes. Listen Look, to I'm Coffee gonna come, Talk. I'm gonna come over there, right? Please come to Coffee come Talk. Come Coffee Talk. The name of the episode is gonna be Don't Vote for Kanye. I'm not coming. Right. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's Jason Martin, y'all. That's a, a bona fide West, Hop, West Coast hip hop staple. 
Go and stream the new album wherever you can. Yeah. We appreciate you joining us on Higher Learning. Today, yeah, my stay tuned. The Compton Story short film coming up too. Oh, word up, word yeah. up, bro. Oh yeah, because you're doing a lot of stuff in the in the in the film realm as well, brother. Yeah, Compton Story will be dropping really soon. I, I'll be telling everybody where it's coming, but stay tuned. Word up, appreciate yeah. you, man. Yeah, that was fun. He's a fun guy. That was fun. And before y'all say anything, he's Van's friend. No, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed that interview. Shout Agree to problem. disagree, but it was fun. Yeah. Make sure y'all check out I Owe Myself. It is such a good such album. Such a good album. And look, y'all. And Coffee and Kush. Y'all, Coffee and Kush, don't worry. We going to help Problem. I'm going to go on there. Me and Problem going to get the whole Jason. fucking. Excuse, Jason. We're going to help Jason. In your Jason. defense, he just went, started going by Jason. Just started going by Jason. Okay. I a problem for you. We're going to help Jason. We're going to help Jason. We're going to get all of this stuff together, like, politically and all of that stuff. Next time Jason <laughs> come on here, you're not going to be voting for Kanye. You guys got like, to believe in us. All right, that's enough. Take Think Cats off. We do not stop learning. I'm Van, Luscious Black, Lathan Jr. And I'm Rachel Lynn Lindsay. Bye, guys. Bye.